Greetings, hey, Alex. There you there. are. Oh, I'm sorry. I had my cam off. What a dork. And now you're back. I'm back. So, anyhow, so it's what, what, 20 below outside, and I've got my fan running in my studio because it's hot in here. How does oh, that work? Of course. I don't so here, know. Well, here runs more because it's cold, so cold outside. Thermostats are still dumber than a bag of rocks, the ones I have. And so the heater just kind of running like down in the basement and the heat's all pouring up here. You know, in other words, it's distribution problem. Yeah. And then so you have the my computer fan, so I running. Have, I have to have my fan going. Yeah, it's hilarious. Can you hear it? No. Oh, it's actually hotter in here than in the summer. <laughs> makes no sense to me. Everything's backwards. Um, so anyhow, welcome everybody to Untold. It is a very... Very cold pre-Christmas show. It's from cold from Florida all the way to California, everywhere in between. Yeah, it's just it bad. snowed in Huntington Beach, California. This is global warming at its finest right now today. The air is so cold, airplanes can't even fly through the sky. It's so damn cold. Yeah, it's just brutal. Yeah, it is. It is real. It's been snowing. Like it'll quit for a day. Or half a day, then it starts again. It's snowing like crazy right now. Oh, well, oh, well. So all this air is coming in from um, Siberia. Did you Siberia. Know Did you know that? This is Russian air. You guys are all breath, breathing uh, Putin's breath right now. We're <laughs> breathing in Putin's breath. You're breathing in Putin's breath. I swear to God. You are. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Look at the thing. I mean, we get this. All this air mass came over. From, you know, from Russia and Siberia. All the way from Siberia. Yeah. Well, it yeah, went across the the ocean or the little bit of land that's we call Alaska, you know, that we bought for 250 bucks <laughs> from Russia. Talk about a deal. Best deal. No, I think we only paid like, I don't know what it was, 3 million bucks for Alaska. That's a lot it of wasn't oil. wasn't much. I don't know what, I don't remember. But every time I hear the number, I'm like, what? There's houses here that cost more than that. <laughs> um, anyhow, so enough of, enough of cold weather. We're all suffering. Every damn person in the whole country is literally suffering right now. Um, so we've got um, two two guests. No, actually three. Three we've guests. Guy, we've got, yes. we got, we have Paul Graves. Yes. Who's a researcher and a witness. He's going to, whatever, we'll get some information out of Paul and then we'll have Paul back later on for cool, a full cool. you know to make him our featured guest. But he's kind of our pull him guest tonight. And then we've got Eric Mintel and Dominic, his research partner. I do not know Dominic's last name, do you? Uh I I'm gonna probably butcher it, so forgive me, but is it Satelli? Okay, I don't know. I just forgot. He's, he's laughing at me. <laughs> You see him? <laughs> yeah, I see him in the back. Oh God! Sorry. Um, have him put it in chat. No, we know. No, we know. So, so I just I forget more than I once again I forget more every day than I ever learn. It's crazy. So, have you ever heard of? Um, you know, we have GPS. Yeah. Have you ever heard of VPS? VPS. Yeah, the V does not stand for vagina or anything like that. VPS. Do you know what that would be? Virtual private server. No, no. No, but it's something new that's coming. It's going to affect everybody. Like everybody here here in chat, I guarantee within two years, you're going to buy a car and it's going to have EPS in it versus GPS. What is So you're going to hear about it first on Untold Radio. It is visual positioning system. Mm. So what it does, it <clears throat> combines augmented reality, cameras, Smart technology and global positioning. For instance, let's say you're riding your bike, which I know you'd never do, but let's just say you are. You got this little um <clears throat> you're gonna use your phone, right, to get around. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. you don't because you don't know your no your own neighborhood yet. So you're gonna get lost. So you're gonna use it and you're just gonna see a little arrow on the screen in the streets. Well, with visual positioning, you're gonna not only see the houses, you're going to see the road, the real road in front of you. And you might see like a wolf that you've got to follow. And he'll wait for you at the corners, pointed in the direction you need to go. 
Cool, cool. So it's much more interactive. Yeah, so it's more interactive. It's, it's, um, uh, how should I, and plus, oh, like, let's say you go into a downtown area, it'll have all the names of the buildings. You'll see them in 3D. Visual so, positioning systems, yep. So now, all those GPSs you're all going to get for Christmases, which, yeah, actually, I don't think many people do, but maybe five years ago they did, right? Before everybody, everybody uses their phone now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, went on a date oh, a while ago. I still had my GPS and the girl laughed at me. She's like, oh, you have a Garmin. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Not rid of it the next day. Well, because you don't think about using your phone. I never do. I've got one in my, in my Jeep, you know, and I just, I use that. But the phones are better. There's no doubt. They're better. Smartphones. Oh, yeah. They've gotten so much better. But you have to have a good place to, um, you know, Bluetooth it onto a screen yeah. or whatever. So anyhow, everything's going to be switching to VPSs. So all of your Garmin's, all of your GPS units, you have all this money invested. You're going to want to upgrade. You're going to want to get rid of them. Good time to sell them. Well, they have any value right now. Okay. And when can I when can I get one of these things? Well, you got to get rid of your Garmin, your antique Garmin. <laughs> oh, that thing is tough. soon, very soon. I mean, it'll. You know, you remember how quick GPS took over? Yeah. It just blush. All of a sudden, you're like, what? Every car comes with it. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's assumed you're going to have GPS in your car. It's assumed you're going to have it on your phone. You know, when you buy a phone. Absolutely. So anyhow. So enough about that. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Of course, I, I did a top 10 video picks, and I got three bonus ones. Three bonus, bonus video ones. picks on top of the top 10. And obviously, 10 is the worst all the way to, or excuse me, number one is the worst. Yeah, we're building up to it. I'm building up to the top one. So the top, top, top one is number 13. So it's top thirteen, I guess. If we if we have enough time, all See, that's right, how it works. You ready to get to the cliffs? I'm, I'm yeah. I'm gonna need some water here. Yeah, I am definitely ready. <laughs> One is going to be. Don't put it up yet. <laughs> we. I'll tell you, you're just, you're so quick with those buttons. Number one is a guy by the name of Felix Semper. He is called the paper God. Now stick it up and you'll know why. These are statues that he built out of paper. That is incredible. Isn't that kind of weird and creepy? <laughs> well, if you want one of these, you're going to part between 5K and a million bucks. Oh no! I hope there's hope they don't get damaged in shipping. Yeah, exactly. Or they don't get wet <laughs> with the weather we've been having. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wouldn't be a good thing. Yeah, your kid would carry it outside. But they are pretty amazing. When you first oh, see yeah. them, you don't realize. Once you realize they're paper, that corrugated accordion paper. I call it. you know, like you buy uh, party favors. Yeah. You know the happy birthday things that open up. Look at this. Oh no! Some of them are robotic. <sighs> it's kind of interesting. So this is something you can buy if you have nothing else to do with your money, right? All right, I'm saving them now. Okay, save your money. All right, number two. We'll just go ahead and throw this quick quickie up here, because you know male kangaroos can get really buff. They look like they've they've been taking steroids. Well, this is a this is a little video of a male kangaroo that just fought off another male. Big, you know, and they're boxing it out, and they literally putting each other in headlocks, trying to claw each other's eyes out. And then this is what they do. Do you have that clip? So watch this. He's support, supporting supporting himself from his tail. I He's saw this and I went, loading. what the? You know, I'm an old dude. I've never seen this before, ever. You would think that would have been, but that's it. It's just that the kangaroo is a pretty well-known animal. I've never seen that before. No, I've never seen it with their up on their tail like yeah, that. Play it one more time now so people can see it quick. 
already gone. Okay, it's fine. It's gone. So that's the flo- what I call the floating kangaroo. And, you know, so he defeated this other male. I would imagine he's just showing off. See how tough I am. I can hold my whole body up with my tail and I can balance. This is weird. Okay. <clears throat> so number three is all about movement illusion. Perspective. Um, what we call parallax. So this is a great demo of parallax vision. So whenever... My, you want it up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I imagine that. Okay. So watch the water when she stops. You see it all start moving. <clears throat> as soon as she starts changing the parallax. Uh, it's like it's not moving. So she's actually just the exact the right distance from the water. There's a lot of things that have to happen for this illusion to happen. But she happened to be in the right spot, the right, the, you know, the right move into the water, the right speed, her cargo on the right speed, and the right distance. Right? That's so true. So now it's moving. Look at just like it freezes. That's a parallax. Parallax. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you can make things look like 3D. I was working on a, um, a TV series with Stacy Keach called Giant Killers. You know, it was a it was a pitch we were doing um, uh, to PBS, but we were going to do parallax, um, really complex parallax filming of microbes, which makes things very three D, makes the foreground very very three D too. It's one of the benefits of it. Yep. Anyhow, so. <clears throat> Excuse me, moving on. Um, so you know how minimum wage is obviously, you know, it goes up. It isn't so bad in Minnesota, but it goes up, continually goes up. And we always pay more than minimum wage at, at our office. But in California, they're demanding like huge, I think it's like 25 bucks, $22, $22.50 an hour for fast food workers, for, you know, certain workers. And it's just too much. They just, they can't make a profit. They, you know, they've literally proven to the governor, there's no way they can make a profit. And so, of course, I saw the first completely, ro- you know, a robotic McDonald's. They have one prototype done. So what's mm-hmm. going to happen is people are going to greed themselves out of a job, you know. Or the, or the government's going to screw it up and people are going to lose their jobs. So here's an example of auto fulfillment robots where you know they're obviously they don't need to pay anybody i would guess these robots you can throw number four up i would guess these robots cost 25 grand a piece that would be my guess well that's what it's a one-year payback that's not much yeah so the moral of this story look how quick they're moving how efficient and and these are going to the shelves picking the order, coming back, lining up for mailing, you know, packing. Because I would imagine, um, <clears throat> you know, it's complicated. But once you get it running, it goes forever. That's incredible. It really is. I believe this is an Amazon warehouse. I believe. Don't, I'm not sure, but I believe. I could have swore I see a Prime box. Is it a Prime box on that one robot? It looks like an Amazon yeah, warehouse. I think it is, yeah. So this is what happens. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, people can demand too much. You can't push the system over the edge because yeah. it just gives them the, you know, it's all, everything's numbers. You're running a company. I don't blame them. You know, I think there was some, I don't know if it was New York, but somebody was trying to get all of the, the Amazons unionized. And I think that certainly prompts this kind of technology even more. So we're always going to need, um, you know, opening type positions for kids and teenagers and, you know. Yeah, everyone needs a chance you to know. So where did you work when you were really, like you were young going to college? Wasn't it a pizza place? Yeah, Pizza Hut. Yeah, but you weren't going to live there. 
No. I mean, you were going to business school, but um, you're not going to live there. But you were happy you had that job. Yeah. You probably yeah. made, what, eight bucks an hour or some damn, you know what I mean, and tips. And But what if the, if the wages would have been so high, you wouldn't have that job. They couldn't have made money. They would have just closed their so they have either two options, close your doors or, you know, make it automotive. Auto, what did I just say? I just combined two dumb words. Make automotive. Auto, automated. Yeah, that was it. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. But, you know, the thing was like, during, remember during COVID, I was seeing signs at Dairy Queen starting out you know, $25 an hour because if we're they were willing to pay that probably not mm-hmm. forever, but the natural market is always the best, you know, to preserve jobs. Cause you need both. Yeah. People do need to make money, but that's not how you're going to make your living working at it. You're not going to support your family working at Amazon warehouse, maybe, or maybe you will, if you do a good job and you work your way up to be a manager. You know, yeah. but just picking orders, you're probably not going to support a family, you know. But kids, a lot of times they live with their parents. They don't need to bring home, you know, 70000 a year. Okay, so enough of that. Number five, this is the most beautiful pig you will ever see. Guaranteed. Leave a comment. Tell me, no, it's not. If there's a better looking pig than this, I'd be surprised. This is a me. I saw this. And I've never seen them before. They are absolutely stunning. These are bush pigs from Africa. Have you ever seen these, Alex? They look like they're straight out of the Lion King. Yeah, they do actually, don't they? But they these weren't even featured in the Lion King. They're from Africa, and there's a, apparently some that have either been relocated. Let me read this. So, um, a stunning animal, the bush pig. The scientific name is Poda Moch Aureus larvatus. That is the Latin. They're a member of the pig family. They inhabit forest, woodland, uh, ravine, um, uh, vegeta- the vegetation, and they hang out in cultivated areas, kind of like wild boars, I guess. Southern Africa, but they've also been introduced into Madagascar, which is the island off Africa. It's just amazing. I mean, oh, serious, yeah, have you ever totally seen these? Totally amazing. Have you ever seen these before? No, not in real life. No. Look at the ears, almost look like horns. I mean, that looks like something out of uh, Star Wars. Do you see how they have fake eyes above their eyes to make them look more fierce? Oh, yeah. Those yeah, are fake. Are fake eyes. They're fake eyes, yeah. Yeah, that makes them look more fierce than those damn ears look like <laughs> horns. But obviously, they're not going to do any damage. I don't see any tusks. I don't see anything. So it's all camouflage. It's just a, or... Yeah, they just call them bush pigs. That's it. Bush that's, pigs. The, that's the name. All right, enough of the bush pigs. Number six. Are you sick of having... Have you ever had a chair stolen either by the wind or by a person? Anywhere? At work? Somewhere? You, mean, you know, you buy a chair, you put it out, out front. Someone comes by and takes your dinette set. I've yeah. heard of it. Yeah, I haven't had it happen, but I've heard of it. So here's a way to avoid that. <clears throat> these are rooted chairs. So you bury these and they grow. <laughs> They're obviously still alive. <laughs> So they'll root into the ground permanently because the sticks that make the chairs are alive or a good part of it is alive. So, so the they question, are still alive. You can yeah, plant yeah, them. Oh, yeah. Somewhere. So the question is, Alex, will your chair grow? That's well, it, grow it can grow with you. Yeah, it can grow. Yeah, right. As you get bigger. <laughs> but, yeah, think about it. There's no way to get them on. They'd have to spend forever digging them. My chairs launched launched into my lake last year. I never got them back. Oh, oh no! From a storm, they were just gone. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in my lake, there's a fish sitting <laughs> on, on a chair. Yep. I just thought it was interesting. Only in Asia, stuff like that happens. Okay, so number seven. Don't play it yet, but number seven. 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> 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 you, <laughs> I got a little trigger, on the draw. trigger finger. Okay. So number seven is the most um, literally primeval clip, video clip I have ever seen. I swear to God, in my life. There's something about this. And I think it was the music choice, which we're not going to play. Yeah. But this is just, it just sends chills up my spine. Go ahead and play it. So one, you, you hear all the birds, you know, these birds gathering around because they're objecting to what's what they're seeing here. This is brutal. And it looks like an ape, although it probably is a monkey. But it yeah. looks like this ape and it's just beating this bird because obviously it's going to eat it. But from a distance, it looked like a gorilla to me. I mean, if anything says nature is metal, it's that clip. I'll play it just one more time. It's kind of disturbing. It really is. If you were to slow that down, it would give you a chill. It looks something out of a movie. All right. Number eight. Um, we got to hurry here. This lone wolf. Go ahead and throw it up. We're going to speed through these. <clears throat> I had a I had a wolf once. That's all he did too. He just he would just growl. He would never bark. He just growled, and he would give you no warning. And he did at one point grab my brother, your your uncle, right by the throat and tore his throat up pretty good. And I had to rush him to the hospital. And I told him, I said, don't ask Lobo to shake. That was his name. And, you know, he asked Lobo to shake, and Lobo did this, did this, exactly. And I said, Johnny, don't ask Lobo to shake. He doesn't like it. You know, and he'll do it for me. He did it for me all the time. No problem. But any stranger could not ask him. And then finally, he asked him one more time, and the dog, or wolf, I should say, grabbed him by the throat and shook him like a rag doll. So, yeah, there, it's interesting. I would imagine this for this guy to get close, it's probably in some kind of an enclosure or zoo. Oh, he's just crazy. Yeah, but wolves generally, what's cool about wolves, trappers in the old days talked about, you know, they'd get a wolf in their trap. They would just, you know, if they, if they, they weren't trapping for wolves, they would walk right up to them and release them. They never feared the wolf. The wolf would, you know, growl, do a lot of, bluster but generally the wolf knew the trapper was going on him and they would just open the trap up and like hold trap and they would take off they would just take off yep yeah people just it's real intro don't try it but this, <laughs> these are you know books i've read okay number uh nine i once again this is an animal i've never seen looks like a hyena right it does so or this is hybrid. this is an animal, yes, and this is an animal that only eats insects. It's an ard wolf. Only eats insects. That is so weird. It's like an anteater. Yeah. So, um, you know, hyenas obviously eat carrion and meat and kill and you know, nope. These are just. Um, they also call them the main jackals. But they eat termites and ants. That's it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Who would think we can keep finding out about more? <laughs> I, I haven't seen any of these animals. This is so bizarre. No, I know. You, you think, you know, because we're not, you know, we're, we're not, it's not like we were born a year ago. All right, next one. We got to hurry here, sort of. Um, oh, this is interesting. So there's two waves. So what they did is they created two exact waves at both ends of the pool, and then they aimed them at each other. This is what happened. Watch this. Super interesting. It's not happening yet. Or there it goes. There it goes. Right now it starts getting cool. Look at that. That weird, like, oscillation. Yeah, super amazing. That's what happens when, because that would never happen in nature, right? Ever. Why would it? But yeah. this is a, this is this is a case of labs having too much time on their hands. <laughs> Let's spend a hundred million dollars and see what happens when we create two identical waves. I mean, it is cool. 
Well, look, they're just dancing. I don't know if they're working on like you know hall design. If they're you know I mean who they're commissioned by. Testing. Someone's yeah. paying their bill. Why? I I have no idea. It's for this viral clip. Pretty cool though. That's cool. Okay. So um, number eleven shows how tough. Don't play it yet. <laughs> Oh my god, you're killing me. Okay. <laughs> Number 12 shows how tough moose. Oh no, no. No, never mind. Number oh, we've got number I'm getting confused. Number eleven shows how tough moose are. It, it's amazing. Let's watch this. This is insane. You gotta remember that thing probably weighs almost a ton. It's like, eh, no problem. Just shakes that off and walks in. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's me on a Monday. Huh? I just figured it'd be cool if that guy was riding the moose. In the <laughs> he probably just would have, yeah, stuck his hand up. Okay. So number 12 is something you would only see probably in what you would think of as a third world country. But you're never going to see this. This is bizarre. It has to do with a donkey, of course. Why do I always keep finding these damn donkey videos? I in TikTok thinks you like donkeys. Oh, it's dead good. Okay, number 12. Play it. <laughs> so what would you do? You're driving down the road and you see a donkey getting a ride on the back of a bike. I mean, you know. <laughs> they're doing shifts. It's his turn to. Oh my Get God. him someplace. Okay, enough of that. So number 13, you got to promise me you do not show your brother bullying. Mm, I will not promise me. Promise. Because <clears throat> he's talking about doing this. But when I saw this, I thought, well, this is something I could do because I make these, you know, powered bikes, fat bikes. That's all I ride is fat bikes, fat tire bikes. So here's a fat tire bike. But you won't be able. You won't not believe what it does. It's a brilliant idea. It's a regular old fat tire bike. Oh no, I guess not. So he's got electric power there. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> and away he goes. Oh. Could you imagine your stomach sinking on that thing? <laughs> so if, the question is. I believe everything's attached to his body, and he's holding. He's probably got his feet locked into the pedals. Yeah, I would hope so. I would hope something. But could you <laughs> imagine trying to balance on there and hold the bike? Oh. But I'm like, God, this is so cool. I, I can't think of anything that dangerous about it. Apparently, this sport's pretty safe. Power parachuting. Yeah, it looks really safe. So you hear that, Eric? Trapped. This is what you need to get. This is what you need to get to find Bigfoot. It is the ticket. <laughs> this is how you get Bigfoot. Oh yeah, because then you can just pack, keep the shoot packed in your backpack. Then when you need it, ready for aerial reconnaissance, just do this. Open your backpack, throw the ball out behind you, and take off. You're flying within seconds. So okay, enough of that. All right, let's get Paul on here. If we've got Paul on the Paul Graves. Paul, are you there? I am. I'm here. Hey, Paul. How are you? Fine. How are you, Doug? Can you hear me I'm, okay? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay, cool. You could talk a tiny bit louder, maybe. Sure, sure. No so, problem. yeah, we're, we're running a little behind today, <laughs> as you know. Sorry. But we'll give you plenty of time here. I don't think anybody's in a rush. So, um, you have been researching... For quite a long time, as I understand. Correct? Yep. Yep. Since 1988, I started uh, a local d database here, actually. Oh, okay. My first 10 years of uh, research were basically uh, finding other witnesses that lived here locally in my hometown. And um, it was quite interesting what I came up with. It was. But why? What got you interested in this whole mystery well for one thing i live i live in eastern washington just on the uh, eastern edge of the cascade mountains in north central washington so there's literally millions of of acres in fact the county i live in chelan county is 83 percent uh national forest wow 
and then there's other wilderness and roadless areas within that within that area. Um, I'd always heard stories growing up and stuff, but I was an inspire. I was trying to be a musician. I mean, I'm still a musician, and so I was doing that earlier on in my life. And but it was in 1988. I was over at my sister's house, and we were sitting there, and there and a TV show had come on. I can't remember which one it was. It was in the late 80s, 88, and she had a, a couple friends over there it was a man and a wife and after the show was over this guy was just kind of silent and he kind of looked up and he goes well you know i've i've seen one of these things oh. it's like no way and so he went on to tell me his story and where it was and and um what he was doing he was hunting at the time he took off uh, his, his partner dropped him off on a corner up off a logging road and he went in the forest told him to pick him back up here in like 30 30 minutes 40 minutes or whatever he was going to go hunt out this area and he went in about half a mile, he said, and, and there was a small pond, tarn, whatever you want to call it. And directly across from that was this, what he described was a hair-covered creature. And it was it was actually crouching um, at the time. But he, he put it in his rifle scopes and, and watched this thing for 30 seconds. And it was making kind of like grimacing faces. It was making weird human like you know gestures with his face i was like well this isn't just a normal animal and and you know he there was no way he could shoot it but um pretty detailed description of what he saw and, and that opened up the doors for me i mean ever since then it was like i was on a quest to find other people in 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 the area and and i have quite a large private database here of you know people that have had encounters i mean some pretty crazy stuff too that Alex. happens over here <clears throat> <clears throat> Hold on just a second. Alex, can you put up um, uh, maybe the Chehalis River? Something so we can, maybe you can give Alex a little pointer so we can put up a map. Sure. Yeah, give, him a, give him an idea. I what, spell that. What's the nearest town? To, oh. to, where, to where I live? Yes. Well, Wenatchee is the town here. Okay. Wenatchee. Wenatchee, Washington. Yep. Okay. And it's basically a ride on the eastern edge of the of the Cascade Mountains. The Cascades yeah. start right at the end of my road up here, and oh, okay. there's a series of small foothills. But the ridge, like behind my house, goes up to almost seven thousand feet, Mission Ridge. And the um, the first inhabitants mm -hmm. here, actually, the the hunters that would go up there, they called this thing that they would see the Old Man of Mission Ridge, and. Uh, the local Indian Wenatchee Indian tribe that was here before the first settlers, their name for the for the Sasquatch people is Chonato, which literally translate to night people. That's the translation, night people. You gotta realize most of well, all the Northwest tribes, they didn't look at, at the Bigfoot like it was a an animal. It was it was another tribe of um big hairy humans, you know, according to them that were kind of in their own doing their own thing you know and they would encounter him from time to time i don't think he's found your exact spot. <laughs> okay alex go up go up into washington state get up around where seattle is okay now let's go due east from there i'm just due east from seattle about three three hours from seattle so the washington state is split up one third two thirds and it's the cascade mountain range there's one at you right there, right in the center. Yep. So the how Cascade, far from the how far from like the Blue Mountain area? I'm three and a half hours from the blues. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is it is it somewhat arid there too, where you are? I am right. See, that's what's so unique about Wenatchee. I we're we're literally on the edge. On one side, you've got the Cascade Mountain Range, which oh. runs from you know British Columbia clear to California. And then on the other side, you get into more of a drier, um, drier landscape. A lot of the uh, diversity, actually geological diversity in the United States, there's a lot of it is within 10 minutes of Wenatchee. I mean, it's a very unique, diverse location. And, and there's, I know areas out in the desert where there's been Bigfoot sightings too. I mean, it's not there. Yeah. The Bigfoots are just not in the thick trees. There's the Bigfoots are where we're not. So if you look on a on a map geographically or or Google Earth and you find these areas that are roadless or or areas yeah. that don't that's where Bigfoots could possibly live, you know. Well, Alex has got us right in the city there. 
So can you can you guide them a little bit more? I really want to get right into it. Sure. So if you just go out, you know, a little bit, you can start seeing these these canyons penetrating the edge of town here. Okay. For instance, right at the top of the of on the, the western there, on the western side of on the western there. side, yeah. So, yep, right so this there. is there a dog. Go. This is a dog leg that comes in here. It's called okay. Mission Ridge. Oh. Um, and there's a ski hill up there too, but it's it actually comes more east than the the actual bulk of the Cascades if you if you go out. But you can see the glaciers and stuff. I mean, there's glaciers right above. Yeah, I see. It, it'll be 115 in town, and you can look up at snow. You know, all year That's round. So cool. Yeah. Um, it's going to be pretty there. So, so what do you, so what yeah. do you think? Why, why do you think this is pretty unique habitat or, or habitat oh, that draws Bigfoots? Oh, because the Cascade Range as a whole is just some, it's some of the best habitat in the world. I, I believe, I mean, okay. li literally, and you know, I'm like at ground zero here because of the, you know, how fast I can get into you know, suitable habitat, but the cascade also, they also connect kind of to the coastal range that goes all the way up into Canada and the coastal range. Did you know that the coastal range is actually bigger than the Himalayas? Wow. You could no, fit all the Himalayas inside the coastal range. Oh yeah. I did not know that. Yep. So, you know, and the cascades connect with that. I mean, you could, like I could take off from my house here and walk to the end of the street and walk to Bobo's house and not be seen. <laughs> as, as an example you know i mean it would take a little bit you know you'd have to dodge some stuff but you could you could do it i mean literally so yeah so the cascades cool. the cascades are just they're much rougher like than the olympics for instance i love the olympics the, the olympics is like one of my favorite places too in the world to go i started going there at a young age when we'd go over to the coast a place called claylock out on the Washington coast, mm -hmm. but the, 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 uh, cascades are much rougher. There's a lot of granite. There's a lot of steep, deep canyons. I mean, there's some rough, rough country in the cascade yeah. mountains. And on the Eastern side over here where I live, you see there's most of the population lives on the West side of the cascades and that's the wet side, what they call the wet side. You know, you right. get a lot of the storms yep. coming in off the Pacific. And then it splits right at the east or at the crest of the Cascades, and two thirds of the land is on the other side. And so there's not, I very rarely run into anybody when I'm in the mountains. Very cool. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm going to just interrupt you for one second. Michael Freeman, I see, is in Chad. You know, Paul Freeman. Oh, hi. Obviously. Hi, Michael. Yes. No. Yeah, this... Michael's in Chad. Um, okay. Michael, I want to give, I'm going to give away one of your books tonight to some lucky person. Give me a shout out if that's okay. It's Christmas. You gotta give give somebody away this amazing book that Michael has written. I don't know. Have you heard about it, Paul? I have and I've written it. I've written it. I've I've read it already. It's oh, it's you amazing. Have? Yeah, it's really good. It's yeah. you know, I encourage everybody that you know knew knew of Paul's work at all or followed it or heard rumors of it to really give it a give it a chance because you know, again and again, you, you'd hear people saying, well, you know, Paul couldn't have got all that stuff out. You know, why was he getting all this stuff? But the fact yeah. is, when you put time in, into, into this exactly. research, you're going to, you know, there's multiple people since Paul, Paul was a pioneer, you know, but there's multiple people that have, that have cast multiple tracks in a certain area or yeah. whatever. Um, I've got some things going on in here when at you where I've kind of got the same thing going where I've you know found some well, yeah, routes where they're coming down and, and it's and highly reasonable that it's highly reasonable, um, Paul, that you're dealing with the same creatures too. Three hours by car is you know mm, no, nah, I'd have to disagree with you there, Doug. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. no, there's there we we got our whole old bunch up here, you know, okay. and there's uh I think that's that's the group down there, and I believe that they were coming down closer because they, you know, Sasquatches like to raid things. They're opportunists, and and if they can get a f some free food or an easy pickings or whatever, they do come down lower. Now in Wenatchee here during the winter time, they come down lower because all the deer come down into town. In fact, they actually protect some of the hills, the foothills here. They, um, it's off limit to hiking, like from early December to April because that's, they leave it for the deer, but the Bigfoots definitely make raids down into town. They don't stay down low. They just come down during the night. It seems like, cause we found numerous footprint track castways. 
of them coming down into town and, and utilizing the big trees in town. Like if someone has a big tree in their yard, they'll hide in that big tree. That's where they hide. They use trees a lot. Um, there was actually one that was seen by a lady here in town. It made it in the paper and it was up in a tree. It was crouched up in a tree. <clears throat> Very amazing. So, g g give us give us one of one of the most amazing stories that you've heard, Paul. Oh gosh, there's a bunch, Doug. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, I know it's you know, hard to choose. But. Uh, well, a good a, one that kind of freaked me out from early on, and I got this from a from a guy that I know real well. In fact, I did some concrete work for him, and he happens to be the head ranger up a particular valley for the Forest Service. He he's the head ranger. And um, one of the best reports that he got coming out from this particular desolate canyon was from a prospector. And he was hiking down past um, this ranger. And the ranger looked at him and he knew that he was there was something wrong with him. He said his eyes were just all bugged out. And this guy was like all disheveled and, you know, and he's like, well, what happened? He goes... You're never going to believe this, but I'm never going back up there. But ba basically what happened, he was in his campsite and he was just sleeping on his bedroll on the ground. He wasn't mm. in a tent. Mm. But this something came in in the middle of the night and basically picked him up in his sleeping bag and rolled him around and played with him for like two to three hours like a rag doll. And just rolled him around the campsite and was pulling him, dragging him. Um, and this... I've got numerous stories like that. People that say that like Bigfoot are, are never aggressive. That's just not the truth because they can be aggressive and there's many stories of them being aggressive. So. Well, yeah, but it seems like, it seems like most people walk away uninjured. You know what I mean? Sure. Most people do. And, yeah. and, but you know, like I've got a report of a guy who was hunting up in the mountains, right, right behind Leavenworth, Leavenworth, Washington. That's another town. 20 minutes from here um and he was hunting he was he was doing a late hunt by himself but he basically got beat up by he was in his tent and something jumped on top of him in the middle of the night and he always slept with his gun on his chest and the thing jumped on it and ended up breaking a couple of his ribs but this thing he could hear it breathing above him and the tent didn't have scratch marks in or anything i mean he said it felt like a freight train on top of him it was the most unbelievable scary thing that ever happened to That's him. I mean, yeah that really yeah. is kind of horrid something like that you know and then i even got another report this last year i was down the oregon bigfoot report and a plumber he told me a story about his sons were in the applegate area of oregon and and they were camping and they had been goofing off and fishing at this little remote lake about a mile and a half in from where they parked and they can't you know they took all their stuff up there and uh and they were running around and they decided to do some wood knocks or whatever. And they got some wood knock backs and that was earlier in the day. Well, so they didn't think much of it and they went to bed. Well, that night something came in and <laughs> basically grabbed the edge of their tent and drug it clear across the campsite with them in it. So that's I've, kind of oh insane. My, yeah. Um, oh, by the way, back to just one second, back to Michael's giveaway. I've written a time down on a sheet of paper an exact time, whoever's got the last comment and that when that clock hits this number in chat, you know, I'm, I'm I don't want people just flooding it with you know dumb stuff, but <laughs> whoever made the last comment in chat when it hits this number, it's luck. I'm gonna we're gonna send you a, a Michael Freeman um book, um, and it's called Michael's the, gonna win it, huh? <laughs> yes. Michael's gonna win his own book. <laughs> Could happen. No, we won't let him. We won't. We won't let him win his own book. But um, we'll send a copy of the uh, Freeman file. So, okay, back to back to Paul. Sorry about that. Um. So, Paul, oh, no, go, go ahead. Go, Sorry. No, you go ahead now. Well, I was just gonna say, you know, it looks like you got some pretty interesting audio clips too. I didn't. I didn't know if. You yeah. Heard. Yeah. Do you mind if we play an audio clip or two? Paul? Yeah. Oh, oh, hey, sorry, sorry, Paul. I accidentally removed you from the stream. You're back. Oh, yeah, no, that would be great. That's definitely something. Um, I've analyzed uh wildlife sounds for a long time. I've got a recording studio, me being a musician, I have a recording studio in my basement. So uh. I was I was able to get some good software early on and start analyzing some of these in a spectrograph. I actually kind of got Dave Ellis into it 
and Dave went on to do some great things. And, oh, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I think everybody, it's something that anybody can do, you know, the, the, the recording audio recording is just something you can get a simple, inexpensive recorder. You can get free software. You put it in there you can look at it. And, you know, the neat thing about a spectrograph, it's going to give you two things. It's going to give you the voice print, which is the shape, actual visual shape. And then it's also right. going to give you the Hertz range. And then we know, you know, there's only so many North American animals. So, you know, after doing this for a while, you can start to tell uh, it's, it's what, what it's not, in other words. And right. so I've got a lot of suspects. And one interesting thing I found over 10 years ago with, with the suspected Sasquatch songs, even if they waver, which if we can do the Olympic one first, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But even well, you if must know, wavers, you must know David Ellis. Oh, Dave's a great friend. Yeah. Yeah. And David's yeah. one of the nicest person. Yeah. No, Dave's world. a salt to the earth. I just and love David. Dave. David did ask a question and we're going to make sure we get to that question. He said, ask Paul about some of his winter investigations. <laughs> coming into Wenatchee. Um, oh, and the sunny, yeah, the sunny the slope. And so let's not, Alex, put that question it. up so we don't forget it. Then we're going to play a sound. Um, has David heard this particular clip? I think play? so. So in it, I did send you a spectrograph image of this too, but it's interesting because this call, the one from the Olympic base headquarters, is in three notes. There's actually a, oh, oh, oh. And it was weird, me being a musician, of course, I wanted to know, well, what are those right. notes? And yeah. so I took my guitar and I and I fingered them out. And it's actually a one, four, five progression. Mm -hmm. It's the first note of a major scale, fourth note of a major scale, fifth, which also happens to be a blues progression. So I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I yeah, if you could play that one and then, then um, I can explain it a little bit. Yeah, so I'll just, I have, it looks like I have six audio clips here. Um, I've got a couple named uh, Fourth Single Scream. I think that's maybe what you're referring to. I got two clips of that. Uh, yeah, no, there should, should be, does one, does one say Olympic base um, headquarters? I'll so I got fourth single scream. I got two clips that were kind oh. of sent in that email. Uh, laughing chatter would not try the fourth fourth scream. Let's see. I think that might be the one. Okay. Let's. All right. I got two clips. Um, here's the first one. Oh. And then let's. Uh, let me play the second one. Is that is that what you're referring to? No, that's not the Olympic. That's another place up here, um, closer to where I live. And that was a real crazy. It was almost like a chorus of of sounds coming through. And of course, you know, recorders. Some recorders don't do justice on you know hearing it live. But that that was a really scary, intense, loud. Right below me, the creek was right down below me, probably a hundred feet, and it sounded like it was coming from right down below near the water in the middle of the night. So you were there when it was captured. You heard it personally. Oh yes, I yeah I recorded it. Yeah, no, that's my recording. And okay, but I'm just mean like you you know you weren't asleep after the fact. You listened to it. Oh my gosh, this recording like you experienced it personally. Oh yeah, yeah. See, Alex is used to his brother. He's always sleeping when he's recording Bigfoot. Sounds. Yeah, <laughs> he's always asleep. He's got the recorder going. Well, so yeah. That's that's the, that's why the question. Do you have one there that says Olympic headquarters, base headquarters? I can I can double check your emails again. I'll just put up the ones I have right now. Uh, okay. Laughing chatter, wood knock tree knock over, something hitting a metal chair, and far knock close knock. So those four things what you just described there were all things that happened in one night at one particular area. Actually, you know. The, the name's out. I, I, I don't have a problem really saying where it is now. It's, it's, it's at a location called Bumping Lake in Washington State. It's had yeah, I've been there. a lot of activity near Mount Rainier. <clears throat> yep. um, I, I could literally write a book on, on the things that have happened. Yeah, because there. you can get in there through the Pinchot National Forest too, right? 
on one. Yeah, act, act, bump, yeah, bumping's actually in the Wenatchee National Forest still. Okay, but can you enter it through the? Um, oh Gibbon? yeah. Yes. yes it's that's a big lake of, yes that's kind of the opening up way if you go out the back side you're going to yeah. be in all that country up there because yeah. we've done expeditions there it's um pretty amazing beautiful oh, yeah. area oh my god oh yeah um okay so yeah we'll just do a lot. i'm more interested in the screams alex yeah um well one thing i just want to say is i, I did paul i did find it looks like your clips uh i got six db uh, selection first note second note and third note is that what you were talking about correct so there's the first one is the complete scream with the three you know all three together and it, it's all one continuous scream there's not a he doesn't the scream doesn't stop and then start again it's all one continuous scream but like i said it's in three notes it's like i'll, I'll kind of do what it does it goes oh oh But when you look at that at a spectrograph, it's straight as an arrow. And that's the thing that I learned over 10 years ago was, was the suspected Bigfoot calls come in really straight on the spectrograph a lot of times. You know, there, there's not a big wave or a curve to them. So that's that 6 dB. Is that the first clip you'd like me to? Yeah, like? sure. Okay, cool, cool. So here, here that here it is. There's a little bit of movement on the when the first one goes off, like someone's coat's brushing, but you, you can hear it. And then what I sent you was the individual, like the first, second, third one individually. So here's the first note. Here is the second note. And the final third note. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. And I did send a spectrograph just to show that it's it's super straight. You know, you would yeah. think with the variance in in the call there that you would get a variance with the spectrograph. And if it was a barred owl or something, you would. It would show a variance and it would show a curve. So, so what are your thoughts on that, um, David? If you're listening, obviously he is, but I'm curious what David's thoughts are. Super interesting. I've heard, I heard like a female version of that, but I kept doing it over and over and over when mm. I was up with um, Alex's older brother up in Snowgrove. And it went on for 20 minutes. Just amazing. Mm -hmm. Sounded operatic. Yes. So, what about some of these other clips that you sent over the laughing chatter? Um, well, this was, this is just an example of what at this particular area, the Sasquatch is like, they literally come right into camps sometimes, you know, and they'll, they'll actually kind of put you down and keep you in, in your, in your own place. I mean, there's, there's some weird things that have happened there, including what some people call being infrasounded or getting zapped kind of, you know, not being able to move. It's happened to, I mean, it's happened to me three times there. Once that was so intense, I vowed never to go back again. Mm. Um, but it's happened to, Oh, 30, 40, 50 people. I mean, lots of people. Uh, it's it's a weird deal. I, I don't quite understand what that thing's all about. But Did did you ever do any um, research with like um, Richard Knoll? Or... I did. I have oh, a little okay. bit. Yeah, I did a Monster Quest uh, show with him, actually, because I helped with three of your shows, oh, Doug. Oh, oh okay. Um, I helped on the Washington State one. Um, I mean, that's probably why your, your name seems so familiar to me. Well, and it's... it's I and I hate to kind of bring this up, but so one of the the witnesses that um, Dean DeWees, who actually played in the Lawrence Welk band, good friend of mine. And I, I played, we had a band, we started a band called cabin fever. He just passed away two weeks ago Oh, geez. and he was still living in the original cabin mm -hmm. that this happened. And a young Rick Knoll was in his, he was a teenager, literally came and interviewed Dean and there's pictures of it on there's, you know, that movie, uh, Sasquatch Odyssey. Sure. The, the four horsemen. Okay. Yep. On the on the CD version, on the extra credits, there's pictures of Dean and a young Rick Knoll. Oh, jeez. At the place, this still because it got into his chicken pen right behind his, and it stole five 
five of his chickens, and this was January 28th, 1977. And it, it stole five of his chickens, and they had snake shot in a in a in a gun they had there leaning up against the wall because there was rattlesnakes up there too. So they came out and Dean shot the it right above its head and it just kind of turned and look at them. And they ran back in to get more ammo because they were like, didn't know what was going on. They were really scared. I mean, he was literally standing 10 feet from it. And it was a white one with a dark V shape part of hair going down the back. And so when they came back out, that it be well before they left, it had laid the five chickens on a snowbank with all their beaks pointed in the same direction. Hmm. Real neat row. And then when he That's came back, three of them were gone, but two of them were still there. Oh, geez. So crazy, crazy. Um, so what was the most hair raising experience you've ever had personally? Just oh, hair God. raising. Probably the time when I was at the hump tulips. Um yeah, that was that was terrifying. Uh, we were down on some property, and this was near Jim Henry's. I wrote a song called Jim Henry. It's about a witness, a longtime witness that lived in the Grays Harbor area. He he actually had property out on the Hump Tulips River. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Hump Tulips. No, I haven't. Not, it's not kind of an, not that river. I've always thought that it was a funny name. Well, Google Hump Tulips and Bigfoot stuff, or talk to someone that lives along the Hump Tulips, and they'll. T- <laughs> They'll tell you there's Bigfoot here like you mm-hmm. don't even know. I mean, did, anyway, did you ever meet um, Harryford, Sheriff Harryford? No, I did not. Um, but I knew of the story. I know that it was on DK Road. I actually know a guy that yeah. lived on DK Road right at the very end of DK Road. And he's he's a witness too. one walked right in front of his uh, truck when he was delivering up to Lake Quinault. Okay. So I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just thought of that. Oh, I've funny. got one of his casts behind me. It's pretty amazing. Some of the best casts, footprint casts. That are oh, ever yeah. Gotten. Actually, yeah. No, I know you're thinking Herringford. I'm. I was mixed up. I was thinking of the other, the other patrolman that saw one on DK Road. I don't think that was Herringford. Oh, okay. Herringford is... was closer to Olympia. Uh, yes, yes. Olympia. Yeah, Olympia. yeah. Olympia. No, this was another. This was another guy that saw one step out in front of his patrol car. Uh, mm. Harrington, I want to say Harrington. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. and he actually got fired or something after telling his superiors. But it was a female one because he saw the breast on this one too. It yeah, was a female, but that so... was DK Road. Yeah. <laughs> So we got Eric and Dominic in the back room. Yeah, let's. Um, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to get you back, Paul. We're going to get you set up so we can get your visuals and whatnot. And we'll get you back for a sure. whole show and we can go over all sorts of cool, cool stuff. But um, you're just so damn nice, Paul. <laughs> and, and you've I had tried, so I try to be. You know, we need lots of nice people in this world right now. So yeah, there are. You know what though? There I, really I, is. Yeah, many neat people in this that are involved in this mystery. I, I hear other people complain, and I'm like, I think everybody's just so awesome. Yeah, no, because everybody, it's so easy to look at the negative, but there's so much other good positive too. Oh, God, and, yes. and if you just yeah. you know concentrate on that in your life, you're gonna have a way better life. Yeah. So, so we'll get you back, but thank you, Paul. Thanks. So well, thank much. you, Doug, and thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. And and Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you guys. And yes, and same care. to you. Same All to you. Right. Yeah. Talk to you soon, Paul. Take All care. right. Sounds good, Alex. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. So our next two guys um are I guess they they call themselves investigators. You can say investigator, researcher, but more than that, they're filmmakers. So, um, Mr. Mr. Mintel and Dominic, let's go ahead and fire them in. Hey, guys. Here we go, Eric and How you Dominic. Doing? Hey, you What's guys up, both guys? look good. <laughs> That's how we roll. That's how you <laughs> That's roll. It. Sorry to keep you waiting so long. That's all right. Oh, whatever. We'll, we'll just keep you on. We'll, we'll have you back if we don't cover enough stuff. But um, <clears throat> so how in the world, let's start with you, Eric. How in the world did you get involved in all this paranormal and bigfoot and dog man and all this stuff well you know it's uh you know we heard just somebody say that they're a musician and i'm you know i'm primarily jazz musician but um have been that playing the piano my entire life Ah. and uh, i had lead the eric mintel quartet but i have always loved the paranormal um we live in bucks county pennsylvania here 
Uh, Dominic and I both uh, live in, he's about maybe, I don't know, 10, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes from me here in Bucks County. And uh, Bucks County is just so rich with like paranormal history, not only history, but paranormal history. And for years, we've heard stories of ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, um, all kinds of weird stuff. Um, so, in, you know, in 2016, I just decided, look, I'm going to, I saw these great shows on TV and I just said to myself, I could do that. So we started, you know, it, it was first, it was called Bucks County Paranormal Investigations. And I switched it to Eric Mintel Investigates just last year because we've been traveling all over the country telling stories and people, I, you know, I always say people are seeing something and we're telling these stories and the things that Dominic and I have both encountered and what we caught on film not only gives us goosebumps, but it just, I mean, especially with the beast of Bray road um, and Dominic being a spirit medium, which I'm sure he'll tell you about uh, was completely out of both of our wheelhouses and uh, you know, still trying to figure out what, what that was. Interesting. So, um, how, how were you raised, Derek? Did, did you, were you raised by open-minded people? Were you raised yeah. by investigators? I mean, who? Well, <laughs> who the hell raised you? I was raised by wolves. <laughs> oh, there you go. I knew it. You, you were thrown into the basement and never brought up. I, exactly. I, I was actually. It, that's not too well. My parents, you know, I'm only only child, so. Oh, okay. uh, but I was one of those latchkey kids, you know. My mother and father worked when I was when I was a kid, so I was coming home from school, and there was nobody there, you know. So I would be sitting myself down in front of the TV, and uh, you know, at a very young age, mm -hmm. and back in the '70s, uh, you know, we're talking like when I was uh, I was born at '67, so uh, you know, the 1970s they had some great shows on TV. So of course I'm in front of the TV and a lot of like, you know, night gallery and twilight zone and all those great reruns, you know? Um, so, but yeah, you know, my father, I would say was really be the one that, and, and, and my mom to an extent too, had a lot of uh, paranormal uh, events happen to them in their lifetime. And my dad would frequently tell me about these things. And I mean, he would go to a medium, he would always go to psychic mediums and one medium told him that, you know, you have a very blue aura around you, but your son has one that's even greater, mm. you know? So, but I, but it's funny because Dominic will tell you, I don't go and feel those things like he would, you know, when we go into a haunted location, um, very rarely, but Dominic is like our magnet, <laughs> our magnets. <laughs> when we're, when we go on an investigation, I, you know, within 15 minutes, something happens. Um, but no, but I was, you know, raised and uh, went to high school and uh, pretty much, you know, uneventful. I was really not into sports or anything like that. Although later on, Dominic and I both uh, practiced karate. We did martial arts for years. And uh, so, you know, really good stuff like that. But um, Dominic came into the into the team here probably in 2017, 2018, after we kind of lost touch with each other for like 20, what, 27 years or something like that almost. Yeah. Um, he got married. I got married, divorced, then married, divorced. But no, uh, and it was so life kind of got in the way. But uh, he came into the, the team and I didn't realize at the time he had said, oh, by the way, I'm a spirit medium and I could probably, you know, be helpful to your team. <clears throat> and uh, all those years before, I had no idea. <clears throat> and uh, so he's been a real, real asset to the team and kind of gives us a preview of what we're in store for. Interesting. Okay, Dominic, your turn. Um, sure. What the hell are you all about? I don't know anything <laughs> about you, other than the fact I did see you in in the last doc I watched. But, yeah, but I, how did you realize you were a spirit medium? I, I've known for years, uh, from oh. a young age. Okay. So you know, I, it passed down through the family, kind of a thing. My my grandmother was a medium and she used to use her oh. gift and she could tell things so that's where i got it from but yeah it's mm -hmm. i've had it for a long time and i didn't really say too much about it and you know I, yeah that's why eric didn't even know we got but, but did your grandmother teach you anything or other than the fact that she had this power to yeah, see she, things and experience she, things? you know 
she kind of explained to me different things because I would go to her and I knew that she had that <laughs> sense and I would go to her and I would talk to her about things and she would kind of elaborate, well, this is what you're seeing. This is how, you know, this is why they're there, how, the, how to be able to communicate with them and understand what they're doing. So, you know, it was, that's, that was the, the, a bonus having her around. Okay. So what was the first experience you had with your earliest experience that most of us will never experience? Uh, where we, where I grew up, i in the house I grew up in and at the top of the hill was an Indian reservation. Mm -hmm. And when I was young, I was probably four or five and my brother and I were sleeping at night and we got woken up by something and we were looking out the window and back then there was no air conditioning so we had the window open and there was a gentleman walking by and it looked like he had two large dogs and had a good conversation with the guy and he just walked on uh, later on we found out that it was actually an indian and or a native and they were deer that were with him that they weren't dogs and that was the conversation we had um around my house with the Indian reservation was on the hill, but then they had their burial site, which was mm -hmm. down below. So, and that's closer to where my house is. So that was my first experience really seeing something like that. And then years later, owning my own business, going into customers' houses, I did heating and air conditioning and going into customers' houses. I would, and I did a lot of older homes, a lot of older farmhouses and, I mean, these houses go back to the 1700s, 1800s, and there's a lot of spirits in there. And I would see these spirits when I would go in for doing the estimate mm -hmm. and walking through the house, I would see them. So um, basically, you see dead people. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> is this something you have to want? I mean, can you control it or is it just happen when it happens? No, I, I, I can control it. I can turn it on, turn it off. Um, oh, okay. Normally what I'll do is, you know, if I know like Eric and I go out on an investigation, I'll open it up and I'll take time to allow them to come into me. And I kind of put it out there that I'm open and available. Um, but most of the time, if I'm at work, <laughs> you know, I work full time. And at, when I'm at work, I shut it off. I try to close it off so that no, it doesn't bother me while I'm trying to get work done. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just, obviously, you're skilled at something many people are very skeptical of. Yep. I've had enough experiences where I, I remember one time I went and had my, um, I don't know, I, I guess you would call it some kind of reading. Yep. My mom had met this woman who was supposed to really amazing. And I remember kind of being really skeptical and going in there. And this woman actually nailed so many things that, including, told me where I was going to live, and that's exactly where I live right now. <laughs> Describe yep. it to a T, and I didn't. I never forgot it. And I was pretty. I was probably twenty when she told me this. Um, she told me what I was going to do, and it seemed so far fetched, <laughs> like completely far fetched to me. And everything she said happened, but I wondered. Was it because I remembered and made it? You know what I mean? Follow it yeah. as a guideline. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's the thing. Like <clears throat> people always ask me all the time, do I do one-on-ones? And and like I said to Eric before, I I choose not to do one-on-ones. It's it's a very personal yeah. thing to and a connection with people. Um, and they're, they're just well, can, it can affect their life greatly. It can. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's and, exhausting know, I, I, too, I think, right, Don? It's, it's very exhausting. It's yeah. draining because, you know, you're tapping into the spirit world and it drains you because of the energy. Mm. But uh, I, I don't like doing one-on-ones. I can. Okay. I just choose not to. Okay. That's, I'll, that's... Tell what, I'll tell you what, Doug. The thing is with Don, well, like I said before, he gives us a preview. Like, I, since I don't really feel those energies that, you know, he would feel, I will go into a location – and talk to the owner and I'll get the history obviously of the, of the building and any paranormal history that's gone on there, any kind of sightings. I'll talk to some of the staff or whoever's there and find out exactly what has gone on in all these different areas. 
So I already know that history, right? So when the, we go on the location, I never tell Dominic where we're going or what the place is. What's the name of the place Okay. until we get there. <clears throat> and then when we get there, it's amazing that every time we get to the location, he goes right to those hot spots that people have been having these mm -hmm. encounters. So there is something there. I think, you know, like he said, mm -hmm. to open himself up to that, you know, there's an energy there. And I think the other thing that I come away with, with a lot of these investigations in, in our research, and we've said this before, I think people's antenna are sometimes more attuned to the, to those occurrences than the average person. Um, whether it be Bigfoot, ghosts, UFOs, something like that, because it's these things seem to present themselves to certain people. Yeah, <clears throat> that's I, I keep hearing that, and you know, and I probably tend to believe it. it seems weird, it's too coincidental. You know, you're like you're uh, the one guy, Paul Freeman or Michael Freeman, that's on here. His uh, his father, you know, yeah. he was one of those guys. I think that actually it might have just presented itself, you know, and it or it was there at the right time. You know, it's one of those things. Uh, it was like when Dominic and I last year, it was just last year, last October, when we went to uh, uh, Elkhorn, Wisconsin, we literally hit the paranormal library, a lottery uh, the night of October 3rd. Yep. We had a trifecta of, of paranormal activity that we just still can't explain. Interesting. Um <clears throat> Maybe it'd be kind of cool maybe right now to just show some of the um, clip or show a clip, at least one to start out with from, do you, what do you, what do you want to start with, Eric? Well, let's, let's do this. Let's, since we started out with. The hell with Eric, you, Eric. Nah, Eric, let's let Dominic <laughs> pick. <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> I'm, just kidding, I'm just joking. <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys want to what do you guys want to throw up there go ahead Dom. oh you. we should we should have dominic pick it because he's the one that saw it first and oh. you know what i'm talking about i i think i think we need to go to the beast of bray road um okay. what what you'll see here in the clip in in the uh i guess Are it's clip two it's, it's the it's clip two yeah. it's not this one uh it's yeah, not clip this one two else. It, that'll be the next yeah. one. Clip two. Oh, Alex will always pick the wrong clip. So. Yeah. When, when <laughs> we were out there, good. he's doing good. <laughs> we were out there in Elkhorn. Uh, it was overcast and cloudy, okay. and See, it was raining. This is flat. And that's and a plane. We were out yeah, there. The skies were just flat. crystal clear in his field, and we spotted this light. Okay. And I said, Eric, what the hell is that? And we're all looking up. We got it on camera, and it was just a white orb, and it was flying across the sky four times as fast as a plane, not flashing, solid beam of light. There was a plane in it coming at it, and it just made a 45 and disappeared. And it just blinked out right there. You could see yep. the other planes that were in the bottom. And yeah. like, like Dominic said, we thought we'd have to scrub the entire investigation because we were on the farm of Lee Hample. We were in his hayfield, 35-acre okay. uh, hayfield in Elkhorn, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. southern Wisconsin. And uh, completely cloudy. We thought, oh, here we go. It looks like it's going to rain. But we got out to the field, and it completely was totally clear. Um, and that, that's when Dominic had looked up and saw this. And right after we saw the UFO, the next yep. clip that we're going to play, we had heard a howl very much in the distance. And then we heard a second one. And you'll, and this is, this is the clip. Uh, it's I guess it's clip one, uh, Alex. Yeah, the one that we had right here. And uh, you want me to play this without audio so you can? No, no, no. You well, let me set it up first, and then you can yeah. play it. Yeah, sure, um, sure, absolutely. It's right now. It's it's Ellen Collins is with us. Ellen is the one that with the reason why we were there. She she paid the freight for having us yep. do this investigation. She was phenomenal, and she's a great fan and friend of ours. And her son Scott was on camera. And it was me and Dominic. And right after we saw the UFOs, when we heard the first howl, and this is yep. now this is the second howl at the Dominic's asking Ellen. And this is the third howl, which we still have no idea what this is. Yep. Go ahead and play it. You can play it. Are you hearing this howl? I am hearing this howl. It's coming from over that way. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. That's getting closer. It was, uh, it was this gut, like this, 
here's the thing you have to understand we were wearing little lavalier microphones <laughs> yep. you know little yeah, condenser condenser, condenser mics. Yep. it was it was that loud to to have picked it up so it was it was 10 times as loud there when we were there um that would have been really loud to pick that up on condenser mics oh and oh yeah like Absolutely. super loud yep and we you know the, we, we <clears throat> looked at each other dominic you were like what you know it was just <laughs> this yep. this complete this was it freaked us all out it was just something that was like this low let's play that again you got to hear this and this is again. this is just so everybody knows this is dogman okay. country this is we were yeah and we'll talk about that that's getting closer Play that one again, Alex. This this is just like crazy. Are you hearing this howl? I am hearing this howl. It's coming from over that way. Oh shit. Uh -oh. That's getting closer. That's all real time too. This is nothing. Yep. We were completely like gobsmacked with this thing. Um and guys, I gotta tell you, we went out there with no protection. Yeah, of course. <laughs> a flashlight and a radio, right, Dom? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> Eric puts well, me in these precar precarious geez. situations. Well, Doug, and then like every good horror movie, Eric decides to split up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he does. <laughs> not, not that night, thank God. But Doug and Alex, let me tell you. Let me tell you this. I was like, man, this was the thing. When we did this investigation, what's in my mind is like, I'm not. we're not going to see anything. I'm thinking that we're going to hear some great stories. We're going to do a great documentary. We're going to hear some great stories from people. We're going to meet some really cool people. Not ever thinking that we'd actually have this kind of encounter. Yep. And that was my being naive, you know, in, in the investigation. So, so you think, you think Dominic, if he would have been there, if he wouldn't have been there and that would have happened. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> well, Here's the thing. We we went and did a follow up investigation in April of this year. We went back out again and we didn't we didn't encounter it. The weather was really bad, but we didn't encounter it. Now, to picture this, too, there was corn. The corn was still up in the field. Um, it was, so the hay field was completely that was all done that he had harvested the hay. So the hay field that was clear. But on either side of the hay field is corn. Yep. And earlier in the day. We had put a drone up and we saw and we were on Bray Road and people say, you're not allowed to park there. You can't do anything there. We were there for like two hours and nobody bothered yeah. us. A sheriff came by and just wanted to know what we were doing. We said, we're just making a film. He said, All right. Have a good day. You know, just he was, he was fine. But we put the drone up and we saw huge cutouts in the corn going from Bray Road over to Lee's property, which is only a two tenths of a mile away, and then going back across Bray Road down into the quarry. So we think there's something down there. There's something. I mean, it's got a water source. It's got a food source. Yeah. And people are seeing this thing on Bray Road, eating roadkill with its hands. And this thing. So for some of your viewers and listeners that may not know what this is, Dogman. It's about a six to seven foot tall upright canine bipedal walking on two legs um that people have been seeing for years you know linda godfrey got a rest her soul she just yeah. passed um she really put the dog man she put the beast of Bray road on the map for everybody um and just it's just amazing what people are seeing what so when we did the uh the investigation in april we didn't encounter the creature but what we did come away with dom remember this yeah we had a hundred uh, over 140 people showed up to our town hall meeting telling their story of seeing this creature and then what i came away with was how the the, the gate of this thing how it walks and how it's gliding and, and everything and, everything was so similar with everybody's story with the the sighting how tall it is how it walks the color of the eyes the gate how it glides i mean everything was so similar it was ridiculous yeah well you know i i gave lie detector tests to a lot of those <laughs> witnesses everybody passed yeah yep no like doubt. what the heck crazy stories but you know they they came through and it was the the um polygraph examiner that i hired 
he was from North Dakota. This guy had no sense of humor. <laughs> like I mean none. He's so he was so intimidating. He had no sense of humor, and hmm. he passed them all only because they passed with flying colors. Sure. And okay. so that says something. These people, you know, they they saw something. Yep. Yeah. Well, we don't know what necessarily we were, what it was, but yeah, when we were out there in April, we were out there for the Beast of Bray Road conference that we had spoken at. And there was a gentleman that pulled us aside and he had a boat down at a dock near the lake. Yeah. And he went down to go check on his boat because a storm was coming in. And as he was getting ready to step up on the dock from the dirt area, there was a paw print and it was huge. The paw print was bigger than his hand and we have photos of it and it was deep. I mean, it was very deep impression and you could see where somebody had stepped next to it and there was this print. And where the person stepped next to it, at even at 150, 160 pounds, it just didn't sink in as far as this paw print. It was, I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. he uh, he pr he tried to preserve it. He called the DNR, and apparently somebody came down and uh, you know took pictures of it or whatever. But Dave, uh, the buddy that we met out there, it, amazing, amazing picture, and it's just it really a, a deep impression. Um, Crazy. So, so what do you think, Eric and um, Dominic? Do you guys think this is some metaphysical kind of creature? Or do you think it's flesh and blood and just living in the woods and surviving? Well, well, Eric? I, I, you know what? It's Doug, I'll tell you. You know, <laughs> Lee Hample, he's got thousands, and I mean thousands, of pictures of this thing. And But it's the thing is, it doesn't want it does it seems like it's it knows when the camera's on because here's what happened <laughs> the night of the investigation lee had said the next day that he wound up looking at the trail cam and for some odd reason the trail cams that he had de on down there that night they all shut off at five o'clock and they didn't take any pictures of us out there and nothing until seven o'clock the next morning. So that in itself was absolutely crazy. And then right after that howl that we heard, then we had this really, really weird mist that came up from the from the ground. Now this mist has been associated with dog man. It's also been, I don't, I'm sure your listeners would agree uh, and have probably had experiences that this mist is also accompanied by Bigfoot sightings as well. Um, so this was a, a mist that was, I call it electronic fog because it was really messing with our, uh, signal for the, um, for our audio. Can, can you describe the mist? Cause I filmed, um, over, I think it was two nights, um, in the forest, a mist that seemed to come out of the ground, rise up really quick and go down and up and down and yeah. up and down. Yep. Like it was shifting and uh, God, I wish I could, I should almost, I can almost go get it. And give it to Alex real quick, but it's so freaky. It, yeah, it was it was very weird. I mean, it was very light, but you could see it. It would, definitely was there. Um, and this is another thing. That's this mist phenomena is a thing that Lee has been photographing. He was out there putting a roadkill deer over by what we call the bait area where he's had a lot of the activity. Um, and in this picture, you can see Lee in the picture, but this mist comes up mm -hmm. and it literally covers his body. And it's in the middle of the daytime. Mm -hmm. Yep. So then there's another freaky picture, guys, where he has a roadkill deer with the trail cams on it. Roadkill deer is there. Next picture, you see this black mist in the corner coming up. Are these, are these by the way, some of them in your dock? They are. Okay, good. And he's kept, I have to say that he's kept a few of them close to the vest because they are some pretty, pretty compelling things. But we do have some in the in the video. Um, and in so you have you see this mist coming over the deer, and in the next picture, 30 second timed pictures, the mist is gone, and so is the deer. Very, very weird. So you're talking about you just said metaphysical. We were talking about portals. I mean, we were talking about could this thing be traveling from portal to portal? Because when Scott had the um, the drone up in the air on us, he usually wears virtual reality glasses to see what's going on. 
he lost us in that part of the field. We completely disappeared. So there is something going on out there that, I mean, the story is just yeah. unfolding. So it just sounds like you guys don't know or haven't. Well, I mean, it, it sounds like you guys might have some ideas that maybe there's something supernatural to this phenomenon. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, whether what does it's... Dominic feel like when you guys are out there? Are you getting a, a That's certain a good question? Energy? You know, and yeah, and when we were out there, we talked about it. And, you know, when we encountered those howls and everything, I had gotten the feeling and I said to Eric, I said, we need to go. I said, this thing is telling us to get out of there. And I said, we need to go. It's not safe. And being that we didn't have any kind of weapons or anything to protect ourselves. <laughs> Lee, um, Lee offered us, a, what did yeah, he offer us? A flare a, gun. A flare gun. <laughs> <laughs> want to take the flare gun. I'm like, shotgun. <laughs> Do I got no. a bad horror movie? <laughs> yeah. I had a I gazoo. Said, yeah. I was just going to try, <laughs> try to gazoo it away. <laughs> I could just picture Dominic being shot accidentally with a flare gun and Sparks yep. flying out his stomach. Yeah, right. Oh man, not good. <laughs> so he's already yeah, had that happen before. So, <laughs> so, so you feed him Eric the musician, and then yeah, yeah. Dominic. You know, maybe you get a chance to run. That's exactly <laughs> it. Exactly. I don't have yeah. to be faster than the creature. I just have to be faster than Eric. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I'm so, well. I'm glad we didn't break up the team because Ellen was like, you know, she was freaked out as well. You know, and this, and we were all just freaked out about this whole thing. The other thing is there was no wind or anything. And we kept hearing all of this rustling going on behind us. Mm. So that's yep. when we all said, and Dominic too was like, man, we got to get out of here. Cause it was like, it was saying, look, this is my territory. Get out of here. Yeah. So that was what we were thinking. And we said, yeah. you know, so, and I mean, guys, this was only like 30 minutes into the investigation. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, like, <laughs> it wasn't like we were out there, like literally 15 minutes, like all of this stuff happened. And uh, yeah. Ali was wondering why the hell we're back so soon, you know? Um, so, oh, and that was the other thing. We took these, like, the, the four-wheelers down to the uh, to the site. And Dominic goes, do you think we'll scare it away? <laughs> and that, that theory was out the window when we heard that. Oh, thing. yeah. So, yeah, it was um, amazing. <clears throat> and, I and I take it Lee, he stayed in the, in the farmhouse. He wasn't coming out. No way. Oh, yeah, no, he I, stayed I, in the barn. He stayed in the barn. I asked him, I asked him <laughs> if he wanted to come out. He was like, no. Nope. Because, oh God! I mean, Lee that would have that would have been my first clue not to do it either. <laughs> <laughs> well, His... here's here, Doug, Alex. Guess what? That town of Elkhorn also that night lost power. Yep. Oh the, no! The well, that's power, creepy. The power grid went down. Did I ever? I got to tell you this. I've crazy. never told this story. I was in Elkhorn, and I was filming um, the you know the Beast of Berry Road thing for Monster Quest. And a dog came out and attacked me. Get the hell out. And I'm like, Jeez. what? It was this huge wolf-like German Shepherd dog. Wow. And he was vicious. And I was, you know, I had walked down a big grassy knoll into a stand of trees. And this dog came out of nowhere. And he was just, <laughs> I mean, he was trying to bite me. And I was using my camera for defense. And and I backed up out of there and barely made it back to my car before he got a good chunk out of me. Wow. But I'm thinking to myself, only here would this happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. It was too much of a coincidence. It was lucky. weird. Lucky. We went yeah. up and did, we were going up and down Bray Road, and uh, we saw. I don't know. Mm. It was I don't know if that statue was there when you were there, but there's a great carving of the Beast of Bray Road in front of this guy's house. So we saw the statue, and I said, "Oh man, we got to get this on video." So I, it, you know, and being the polite person I am, I went up to the house, you know. But of course, I'm, I'm going up to the house and I'm seeing like signs, you are on security camera. <laughs> you know, I'm waiting, for, I'm knocking on the door waiting for, <laughs> you know, but the guy came to the door. He was totally cool. I told him his name was Jerry. I said, listen, we're doing a, a documentary here. Is it all right if we get some video? He's like, absolutely. And uh, so I sent him a link to the uh, to the video too. But amazing stuff, man. And then, I mean, that was just that. I mean, a week later, Right. Dominic and I go to yeah. the New Jersey Pine Barrens. And, you know, of course, people will know the Jersey Devil and the New Jersey Pine Barrens. Are you sure you just didn't go to uh, Atlantic City? Yeah. 
<laughs> we, Eric says, oh, we're going to go into the Pine Barrens. We're going to hunt Bigfoot. And I said, we're going into the Pine oh, Barrens. That's a creepy I'm, place. I'm, I'm going to take my truck. He's like, why? I said, I don't think your car is going to make it. No. <laughs> and we're five miles into the sand through all these ruts with filled with water. And I'm Thank like, God his truck got us through, It's a good through, thing man. I took my truck. That's a weird area, isn't it? It's just weird. Oh, it is. Uh, and Doug, we were on a road. We were in an area called Mount Misery. <laughs> yep. Just to give you an idea. That's nice. Very, very strange. <laughs> yeah. Five miles into this place by truck. And we were like, you know, are, is it going to be okay? And one of the researchers that was with us is like, yeah, it should be fine. It should be dry. Everything should be dry there on, on the ride down. It should be fine. <laughs> we're going through lakes of like, you know, potholes that are like mini lakes that were and we're all just going up and down in the truck like this. But we finally get there and we got out of the truck and we went about 600 yards into the woods, set up base camp. And yep. Dominic, you again, is yeah. right there talking to Art Mack, who's one of the researchers. Eric Spinner is another researcher. These guys are doing some great research uh, down in the New Jersey area. But Again, why don't you tell them what happened, Dom? Because you, you again, you started yeah. it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just sitting there, and I was interviewing Art, and all of a sudden we hear shh, 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 shh and we're like, Every, they're shushing us, and we're like, what is going on? And all of a sudden we hear a whoop, and it's really close to us. And Eric Spinner's wife turns around and she says, "Do you want me to answer it?" And Eric was Spinner was like, "Yeah, answer it back." She answered it back, and it was probably a good. How would you say maybe 10, 15 minutes? They were whooping back and forth to each oh, other. Yeah, absolutely. It was it, it was, was insane. Crazy. It was insane. I mean, I mean, Doug, I also, you know, and, and Dominic knows this too. I always looked at those shows because and I see I hear these people whooping and hollering, and I'm like, is that what they really sound like? Yep. And I'll be damned if that's not what we heard that night. So it changed my whole perspective on the Bigfoot investigation mm -hmm. and, and the and the existence. Because they, there was some kind of intelligence going back and forth. Because there was nobody there. I mean, it, yeah. it was completely isolated. Um, and it was just the weird... I mean, and the weirdest thing is we had the night vision on, of course. But I turned the night vision off to let everybody know what we were actually seeing. And it was completely pitch black. Pitch black. I mean, it was just so dense down there. But actually... Like Dominic said before, we felt safer there than we did in the yeah. in Elkhorn, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> safer with Bigfoot than the Dog Man. But um, as the the whooping and hollering was going back and forth, we did hear a lot more big a big rustling sound behind us. Yeah. So there had been the idea was there has been juvenile Bigfoot sightings in that area. There's been prints. There's hair samples. Um, also, Lee, and you saw in the documentary, but for your listeners, Lee, back in Elkhorn, has hair samples that he's trying to get DNA uh, testing done. Under the microscope, these hair samples are translucent. There's no medulla. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we're thinking, why is this thing not able to be photographed? Or it's it's a blurry image. It's there. You know, it's like, it's like a deer. You know, like deer are so you know, they could camouflage themselves so densely into the, into the brush. I'm wondering if that's the same thing with this creature and with Bigfoot, you know, they can. Yeah. I mean, the hair may have something to do with them being camouflaged. Um, I mean, it's kind of like a fiber optic tube. Yeah. Yep. Similar, similar. And um, yeah, the key is for him to make sure it's got a tapered end it's truly mm -hmm. not a fungus, but yeah, it sounds like he's got the. I'll send you some pictures. I'll, I'll send you yeah, some pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah you'll, you'll be surprised by it. Very. Um, and then, uh, and then we met. You, you know Tom Carey, right? You know you've you've talked to Tom. I'm sure. You no, know, um, he's the he's the authority on Roswell on the U, Roswell UFO mm. crash. He's written about seven books. I should connect you guys. He's great no. Guy. I mean, I used to hang out with even Stan Friedman. I've never. Oh, yeah. Yep. I've uh, never, Stanford. I've never met Tom. Uh, Don Schmidt is uh, his writing partner. Oh, okay. Don Schmidt. Um, but uh, so we went to uh, Tom after the Bigfoot investigation the next day, and talked to Tom, who was also an anthropologist. And Tom gave us an idea of what he thinks it could be. Uh, I think he said, "Oh God, what is it? It's the uh, scientific term for Bigfoot." It's, uh, uh, 
paleo uh, gigantic, not giganticus, but Giganto. paleo giganticus. Uh, See, um, um, by the way, I, I got to do something. I'm going to reach way over here and grab this paper because John, why is that not showing? <laughs> Jesus, weird. Anyway. That's that's paranormal. It's eight thirty nine, and John Ayers won the book. Ah, there you go. Congratulations, oh, you go. John. You've got haunted stationery, Doug. Yeah, I'd say. Anyhow, I wrote eight thirty nine, set it over there, and he hit it. So congratulations, John. Get it, get Alex your address, and we'll ship that out. Uh, as early as tomorrow, I guess we can ship it. Yeah, and, maybe, and John, or maybe not. <laughs> Those things are selling so quick. That's great. Do we have and, any in and, stock, Alex? Maybe not. Yeah, and just so John knows, Eric's clock is off by an hour. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, um, it's a time. So, we, so oh. anyhow, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, let's see here. Um, where were we? You guys were in the Pine Barrens. Yeah, yep. Pine Barrens. And how Arizona. how big? Do you know how big? The Pine Barrens is how many acres or square miles? Go ahead, Dom. I, I'd have to look it up. I'm not oh, okay. 100% sure. Alex, can you look that huge. up? It's huge. It's huge. Pine Barrens, can you look that up yeah. in New Jersey? I've been through there many, many times, but I've never, I've just driven around, never done research. When it came time to do research, I sent other people. <laughs> I don't blame you. Because uh, I had driven through there so many times late at night and yeah. on the back roads. Because I used to shoot, um, I used to work for Steve Rodfeld out there. Oh, yeah. Steve Rodfeld Productions. And, um, I, and we'd have, we'd do conventions in Atlantic City and driving through there in the middle of the night. Yeah. I'm just like, no. <laughs> I was like, so creeped out there. Yeah. I'm like, no. I, I So I remember um, sending... Um, uh, Tom Phillips out there in my place. I'll tell you what, you know, it, it is, it's just a very, very, uh, very strange area. This whole, that whole corridor is very strange. It is. It's something, um, you know, it's something not right. Something's definitely not right there. There I don't is, know how to put it. there is a weird energy there. Um, you know, and, uh, so one of the, my bandmate, uh, so I've been a jazz musician for probably close to 30 years, and we've had some wonderful opportunities. We've played at the White House, played for President Clinton, played for President Obama. Um, we've played at the Kennedy Center, United Nations, all over Very the place. Cool. Um, but my drummer, who is not really into the paranormal at all, told me a story that he had been driving through the pine on Route 70, I believe it is. Is that 70 there, I think? Yeah. And uh, he was going down the road, and... He sees this gigantic, like ogre type thing, like a translucent, invisible type thing, and he thought he was going to hit it. So he just he just went he just went through it, and he literally went through this thing and whatever it was. And I was trying to see if there was any kind of stories of that from other people that have experienced that, because there is a lot of weird things. Uh, we were thinking maybe too the soil has got a lot of iron in it as well so it's we like sand we, iron yeah, I, yeah irony, yep. sandy iron yep. soil it's even the S soil's weird yeah it's just very very weird so um the the those investigations last year was incredible and this year i mean they we've been off the charts i mean in uh in august we did a video at a 1759 farmhouse for a uh a friends of ours and couple that own a an uh, antique salvage company it's called New Spirit Old Soul in Boyertown, Pennsylvania. And I had told Dominic, uh, you know, this is going to be a very lighthearted video. And, uh, you know, we we're going to have some fun. Well, that turned very, very serious very quickly. And Dominic could tell you about that real quick. And then we could talk to, about the uh, Hanoverville Roadhouse, which we did right after that. But Dominic, why don't you tell them a little bit about what happened? Because you really felt some really wild stuff. Yeah, when Eric Eric didn't tell me anything about the 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 place we were going to, he just said it's it's north, and we went out there. We get out to this this site, which is you know now you know um, New Spirit Old Soul, and I didn't know anything about the place. Eric was doing an interview with our two cameramen at the time, with the owners, and I just kind of walked around the house, the property just to get in tune to, to let the spirits know I'm there that they could talk to me. 
and uh, there was a spirit in the well house outside and it kept calling me in and I, I kept telling it, no, I, you have to wait, you have to wait. Um, but we went inside, everything was good. Beth, the owner, one of the owners was talking to me in the kitchen and she's like, come on, come on, tell me something, tell me something. And I'm like, I can't, not until the camera's here and Eric's here. And uh, we were doing the investigation then. And as we we're up on the second floor, we were in the master bedroom. And when I was in the kitchen, I kept saying that there, there's multiple spirits here and the one is not happy. And there was a whole reason why that spirit wasn't happy and they wanted to get it out and they bum rushed Beth. Um, Beth is a little bit sensitive. She's not a, a big medium. She, she doesn't, she has the gift, but it's very raw. And uh, we were up in the bedroom and with me being there, my energy trying to communicate with the spirit that was there um, did not want to talk to a man and went right after Beth, who was the female and wanted to come out and when that happened, that's when everything turned and the whole yeah. investigation went right, right, hardcore, horrible. I mean, yeah. Well, and, <laughs> um, and Beth, yeah, Beth started hyperventilating. Yeah. Um, and we had she, to get her out. We had to get her out. She of was crying. She was upset, hyperventilating. Mm -hmm. um, it, she she's like, I have something. It's just all over me. Um, but we were I got her out of the bedroom got her in the hallway and then they we got her finally outside of the house and she was able to calm down and her girlfriend that was there um she came in and came upstairs and went because she wanted to know what was going on and she's another sensitive person a little bit more experience with spirit and when she came in with me being there we were able to get some of the information out and what came out was the husband had an affair with one of the servants and had a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the <clears throat> wife found out later because as the child grew, it looked more like the husband. So she was very angry about that and very um, upset and ashamed that this happened. So there, I mean, there's a whole story that goes along with it. When we went back, we did more, and I was I was upstairs with Beth and her girlfriend and her sister in that room for probably a good hour just so the spirit could get gotcha. this emotion out to help the spirit. Um, and it was just it was an amazing experience for them. And they, they couldn't do it on their own. They needed me to be there to be the battery to get that energy to be able to make that connection. Yes. Yeah. Well, so, I've turned down every haunted <laughs> location thing like i keep getting invited and i keep going nope <laughs> <laughs> and i think it had something to do with the um the thing that you just said dominic where it was attaching to her yeah she felt something oh, i'm like no no thanks yep. so she and got so she got so emotionally distraught over this whole thing uh and renee renee the same yep. thing and you could see it right on the video because I had said to uh, to Beth, I said, Beth, do you want this on there? Do you want this this basically a meltdown? Do you want this on on camera? And she's like, keep it. If it's if it happened that way, we're gonna keep it. And I'm like, All right. and she didn't even real she didn't even remember what happened. No, like she didn't even remember. She was so out of it. So of course, you know, I edited it and I did it in a tasteful manner. But there's a lot more on there than yeah you know in the footage uh <clears throat> but when renee went in there i mean she actually just was doubled over Jeez. so there's a couple of digits why i want to interrupt you one second um tracy benna asked whether you guys are from pennsylvania and answers yes. yes um and somebody else had answered the question the pine barrens is eight thousand acres oh eight thousand well yeah there you go yep. that's yep. a lot a lot and a lot and a lot could hide there <laughs> yeah so yeah very very cool um yeah so we're in january now right after the holidays dominic and i are, are rolling into a follow-up mm -hmm. uh it's called a hallowed grounds of the homestead part two and we need to find out exactly we're going to tell the story now of we didn't even get to invest no we didn't get it on video house. we yeah. we had to stop the whole thing that night because it was like oh, everybody wow. was so upset there's so much more to, to see. 
We yeah. didn't go to the basement. We didn't go to the attic. We didn't even the go servants to the, quarters. the servants' quarters where yeah. half half of the story is there. So we're going there. And Dominic, I mean, sage yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to be nuts, yep. man. So yeah, uh, and, and that's coming up soon. So, so um, Dominic, when you see a spirit, yes, what what are you seeing exactly? Do you see them in their clothing, and how do you explain clothing on a spirit? Uh, basically, uh, you know, a spirit, a ghost. Um, I see full body apparitions. Um, I do see them, you know, in their clothes, and it's usually time period clothing from okay. when they were there. Uh, it's usually something that they were either, you know, wearing that they loved. It's not what they were buried in, okay. but it's what they love to wear. Okay, they felt um, comfortable wearing. Yeah, and and that's basically, you know, when and there's <clears throat> many different, you know, spirits. Obviously, they're older; they've been around a long time. Um, this one in particular, the the spirit's name is Elizabeth, uh, and and Beth is the owner of the property now so they have a connection there and that's why she's really attached herself to her um but i you know when we went back and we did you know we showed our video to an audience and we did right. like we did a showing and we did four walkthroughs that or three walkthroughs that night three or four um two two, <clears throat> two sold out like showings yep. for the uh for yeah this video of, of this property calling. and we walked them through the house and and after we did it the first night we were there, I and mean, that's what I said. I spent about, you know, an extra hour up in that bedroom with Beth, Renee, and her sister, Joy. Um, and basically the, the spirit was there. She was sitting in a chair. Um, she originally was on the bed and then got up and moved to a chair. Uh, when we walked people through, before we walked anybody through, I went into the room. I explained to her what we were doing, told her conversed with her, said, you know, we're not here to upset you. We're here to tell your story, um, walk people through, and it was fine. Her son, Beth's son, and his cousins were goofing around and went into the bedroom and caused an, an issue and stirred things up. Uh, the one cousin got poked in the back by the spirit because she was annoyed. Uh, they came running out, so I had to go Jeez. back upstairs and calm her down. And then you got um, you got pushed. You got pushed. I, yeah, I got pushed um, when we were up there. She Beth was ready to come into the room for some reason. This Elizabeth, the spirit, will not cross over the threshold into the hallway. She stays in the bedroom. And when Beth, the owner, was coming in. Uh, I had to tell her to stay outside because I was almost pushed over by the spirit because she wanted to get to her. It was trying to get to um, Beth again. Yep. Do you, do you so. think spirits can control where they are? Or do you think they just kind yeah. of like, we can't control when we see them? Yeah, they they choose who, who can see them, who can't. Really? Um, yeah, they, they can do that. And Elizabeth, the spirit, will move from the master bedroom to the back bedroom and it was a two bedroom house and the children were in the back bedroom and I'm not going to go into the whole story because that's going to be saved for our next video. But they could see but, the video now, hallowed grounds of the homestead. Yeah. I mean, it's, but the back bedroom was the kid's bedroom. Okay. And, um, there's a whole story with that back bedroom, but, um, but the, the mother Elizabeth will move back and forth between the two rooms through the wall, but she will not go into the hallway. So it, it's very interesting. And what is what is your take, Dominic, on um, and Eric? What, what is your take on people that somehow remain as these haunting, haunting figures? What, what's your yeah. opinion on and why that happens? I mean, I I say, and Dominic might have a different opinion, but I I think that if there's a place that's being haunted, um. I always try to go down the road of like, well, they liked being in that location. So rather than, and you know, we've never experienced maliciousness. We've never s s experienced that. Um, this spirit was, it, there was a lot of emotional energy, but she was not hurting Beth. She wasn't, you know, attacking Beth. So that's, we have to make that really clear. Um, but what I think is that these, these people liked being there. Um, 
they're in that house. This is a farmhouse that was, pro I mean, it, the ceilings are really high. So this was a yeah. farmhouse that was, you know, it, more for the upper echelon people of the day, you know, and um, it was like a state's, like a statesman's house. And I mean, it had a, it had a little tavern inside of it. People, you know, gathered in the yeah. tavern area. Now we went in there with a magnetometer and we don't use a lot of the gimmickry that a lot of people use like the spirit boxes and REM pods and stuff like that. We do use the magnetometer because there is that electrical energy or that uh, the earth's that magnetic energy that could be associated to some kind of entity or spirit. And the odd thing was that magnetometer was going off the charts in all these different areas. And there's no, there's no wiring there. There's not even like, uh, not even Wi-Fi there. So there's nothing that could potentially set that off. No cable, no nothing. Have so, you ever seen a ghost, Eric? Uh, I will tell you this. I never saw a ghost, but real quick story. Um, and I think it was my guardian angel. I was on my way to a gig one night. This is 1997. And I don't know if anybody's ever had this experience, but I was going down this back road. It's February. It's cold. It's dark. And I'm going at a pretty good clip down this back road in my area. It's called Pineville Road. And I'm going down. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, a deer runs out. Boom. And I hit it. And I feel terrible. And I'm going, like, I must have been going 55. And I slam the brakes on. And I'm sliding. And it was a little wet out, too. So I'm sliding. And as I'm sliding in the car, the deer is going with me in front of the car. And we slide for like 40, 30 feet or something like that and stop. And I'm stopped and it's pitch black, nothing around. And I'm looking at this deer and I'm like feeling so terrible that I just did hit this guy. I didn't have any chance to avoid it. And out of the dark, I hear a woman's voice say, how's your hands? Gee. And I looked over and here this woman comes out of the woods and it was like when I when I was in front of the car. So when you see the car lights were on and someone is there in the lights, you kind of see like a, a silhouette. You don't really see the the person themselves, but she was in silhouette form, like this white blurry silhouette. She then takes the deer, this 200 pound deer by the ear and literally just drags it off the road like it's nothing. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Yeah. And this happened. <laughs> and then she told me, she goes, she goes, you better get in your car, get off the road and get in, the, get in your car. Jesus. And I, I okay. went back and I, I left, went to the gig, told the guys what happened. They were like, and you know, my whole front of my hood is dead. And I went, well, I hope to God you got, I hope you got more scared after you left. You left I, thinking what an idiot I was. You know, Doug, I don't, I didn't think that way. I didn't, I didn't really oh think that God. I should, I should have thought. A woman was, walks out of the woods. Well, I was more that's your first clue to just get the hell out of there. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I was more perplexed, like, what the hell just happened? Oh you know, God. I was like, who, what, did, what did, what did I just stumble into? Yeah, so say. that's kind of what I was. So the next day I go back and there's nothing there. There was no houses <laughs> there. There was, I was, I, what I was thinking was maybe it was somebody that came, was in the woods or something, but I looked around, there was nothing there. There was no one there. No one could have been there. Um, it was so weird, man. Um, my father had the same similar situation happen years before in the early 70s. We used Jeez. to live in a house in Upper Black Eddy, which is northern. It's probably about 15, 20 minutes from where I am now. Um, and he came home late one night. He was out and he had a habit of cooking a steak on a hibachi on the grill. Uh, and he put, you know, the coals in there. And as he's cooking the steak, we live, we lived across from the Delaware river. So across the Delaware, uh, he looks over and he sees this white figure and here it's a woman like floating on the water. And he's told the story for years. Um, and as she was going right in front of his vision, she turned his, her head and she's a good, I don't know, half, a, I don't know, it's maybe seven, 800 yards away. When she turned his, her head to look at him, her face came right up to his face and then turned away, went back to the water and was floating in the water and kept saying, I'm going home. I'm going home. And as you as she's saying that, it's like echoing in the in the valley. OK, Al, can you can you shut his camera off? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> there you I'm go. Just <laughs> I'm just kidding. But he teleported. He's over there now. Yeah, we just teleported you on the other side there. So just be quiet, Eric. Yes, I am. <laughs> God, I'm still. Uh, see, I got to take the gar. I got to take the garbage out tonight. Oh, his head's going to be on a swivel tonight. Oh, yeah, my head's will be on a swivel now. But, Doug, you were a Monster but, Quest producer. I don't care. I'm not afraid of monsters. He's afraid I'm of afraid ghosts. Of, I'm afraid of women walking out of the woods and going, is your hand okay? Well, and grabbing yes. deer by the ear and then dragging them into the forest. But here's the thing. I'm, oh. a, I'm a piano player. That's what made it even more creepy. Why would Gosh. she say that? Why exactly. Would she say that? Yeah, that exactly. Has, that's been on my mind for years. I mean, I've told that story to Dominic. I mean, yep. Dominic will attest. We've got some weird areas of here. We've got an oh, area yeah. called Hansel Road, right? We did an investigation yep. down there. Um, now, Doug, we've got UFOs over Doylestown, which is right around the corner. I'm getting video. I'm going to have to send you some video. I'm getting yeah. video of people that are seeing this weird light that's coming up every night, and it's not yeah. in the star map. It's not there. Okay. It's, it's a light that's all by itself. And it's yeah. right there and very, very strange. So people are sending me drawings, what they're seeing. Uh, it's there, a there's a lot of weird stuff going on that um, <clears throat> a lot of new types of things like this that are happening all over the world right now. It's quite you interesting. Know, oh, yeah. And we, were, and we always say this, right, Dom? It's like, would we even be talking about this 10 years ago as freely as we no. are now? No. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think we're all free to, I mean, <laughs> even the government's kind of said, finally said, yeah, they're real. Yeah. <clears throat> they're not a threat, but they're yeah. real, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> Certainly no threat. Not gonna... <laughs> the woman was definitely <laughs> not a threat. Come on. I could just, I was just waiting for your other half where she started eating the deer in front of you. I'm like, no, 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 yep. no, You know, I don't know. The deer was gone too the next day. So I don't know. Maybe that, maybe that did happen. <sighs> now you got me thinking, Doug. I'll be, pa I'm going to be packing heat tonight when I go take the garbage out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Um, yeah. So, these things, okay. These Dominic. Happen. So tell us, since we're telling creepy stories and tell us your creepiest story, Dominic. Uh, well, yeah, Tracy Benna, I, hopefully I didn't butcher your last name, but she said she's from Pittsburgh area. Oh, yes. Eric, Eric had drugged me out to Pittsburgh. It was five and a half hours. <laughs> um, we started our drive. It was a nice sunny day. By the time we got closer, it was snowing <laughs> and yeah. we went to Haunted Hillview Manor, which is just outside of Pittsburgh North going up towards Lake Erie. And, uh, we went into this place. I didn't know anything about it. Didn't know. I just knew it was in Pittsburgh area and we caught some stuff on camera in this facility. Um, and 85,000 square feet. Yep. 85, no 000. heat in the building. Yeah. The only heat they had was in the office area. Um, it was boilers where they had people <clears throat> come in and they scavenged the place. They stole all the copper out of it. There was no electric in half the building. Um, but when we were there, we got, we got what they call the creeper and that was probably the scariest, that hallway, that one hallway section. Um, they had a man in there that would yell at you to get out of his room. Um, which I went into his room and he was definitely, he was there and he was telling me just to get out. He didn't want me in there. Uh, we saw an orderly at the end of the hallway and he was waving me down to, to come down to that end. And when I got down there, it was the ambulance entrance um, where they would bring people in and out. And that's why he was there. He was an orderly and he would help bring the people in. Um, but I said to Eric, when we were in that hallway, I said, set up a static camera facing the other way. I said, we're going to get something. And he's like, OK. So we set the static camera up and we saw this creeper come out of the doorway and it was real small, black mist almost. It yeah, got it like, large. It got yeah. And then it got small. And it then it got weird. large. It and then it got small and then went back into the room. And we <laughs> and we asked one of the guys there. He's like, Oh yeah, yep. you caught the creeper. Like it was nothing. Like, oh yeah, you got the creeper. <laughs> That's the <laughs> scariest. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so nonchalant. 
Yeah, I'm right. sorry. That still <laughs> doesn't compare to Eric's story. That's well, not we, I mean, well, I just punched that creeper. But when we were when we went and we had yeah, a lady geez. walk us through, and when she was walking us through, we went upstairs to a hallway on the second floor. And as and this is during COVID, so we we're yeah. all wearing masks, and again, no heat. So we're freezing, we're bundled up. And as we're walking down this hallway, I just stopped and I said, do you smell that? And Eric's like, smell what? And I'm like, it's not a pipe. It's not a cigarette. It's not a cigar. But I said, it wasn't a cigar. It wasn't a cigarette. It smells more like a pipe. And I said, but do you smell it? So Eric pulls his mask down and sniffs. And he's like, yeah, I smell that. The lady mm. that was with us, she pulled her mask down and smelled. And she's like, I smell it too. And I was like, yeah, I said, uh, mm -hmm. that's one of the spirits. I said, he must have loved smoking a pipe. And we come to find out, yeah, there was a spirit up there that used to like smoking a pipe. And he took his own life is what she had told us. And I said, no, he didn't. And I said, he's also telling me the room you think that's his is wrong. This is his room over here. And she, she just stopped and she was deadpan, got white as a sheet. And she was like, you're the second person to say that we had another paranormal team come in and the lady was saying that this is his room. And I'm like, well, it is his room. He's telling me it's his room and he didn't kill himself. And she goes, she said the same thing. Had no idea, but yeah, I mean, there there's that place is definitely there's, there's things going on up there. So, um, so Dom, can I, can I ask you a question? So like with these sure. spirits, is it like a piece of that person left behind or is that the entire like you know like we're conscious we're talking obviously you know like are they you know what i'm saying is like is that yeah. all of that person are they left behind or is well, it it's, almost like something horrific happens and some of that energy is stuck there it's what it is is my experience i've never met a malevolent or bad spirit uh, i've i've that this the ones that I've seen and that I've dealt with, they're attached either to family member that was their favorite, an object that they loved, um, you know, and that, and I avoid going into antique shops because of that. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's a whole other. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> but um, they're usually there because it was either the spot that they absolutely loved. And it was their yeah. favorite and they didn't want to cross over and they can. And sometimes they come back so they can go back and forth because they're just energy at that point. You know, we're all energy. Okay. Energy. So are you, are you saying we should not go to antique stores? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Really? <laughs> I've, had, I've, I've had people, oh. um, even places that we've done that people have bought things and brought yeah. them into their house. Me. And, when we were down in Bernathan, um, we wow. were we were did Bernathan, the beast of Bernathan, which is another, another dog like canine. Man. Yeah. Dog man. But the one gentleman, he we were there, we were doing the showing, showing the, the people that sponsored the video. We were showing them the video. And the gentleman invited me into his house and he said, What do you feel in my house? It, it's 1920s, it was built. And I he says, but you know, it's the property's been there longer, obviously. And I said, yeah, and went through the house. And as I'm going through the house, there's a woman in the house that owned the house that's still there. Her husband is still there. And there's a, he bought her this 1950s stove and she absolutely fell in love with it. And she's in the kitchen all the time. And she was telling me, look at my stove, look how fancy it is. For what it was at that time, it was top of the line. Look at it. It's beautiful. You know, it's it's the Cadillac. Mm. And so I'm going through the house mm. and we go up to the second floor and I go as I'm going up into the second floor, we pass by one of the bedrooms and I stopped and I walked into the bedroom and he's like, what are you doing? And I said, spirits telling me to come in here. And I point to a steamer trunk from 1917. And I said, this wasn't yours. It wasn't in your family. And he goes, no. He's like, my mom got me that. He said, uh, it came from St. Louis. He said, I had a sticker on it. It came from St. Louis. My mother found it at a shop and 
bought it and brought it here because it matches the time period of the house. Mm-hmm. And I said, there's a spirit attached to that. And he's like, really? I said, yeah, She this was her steamer trunk and she loved it. She's still there with that steamer trunk. Um, and as I'm talking to him about it, his mother and came in and all of a sudden there was another spirit and uh, I'm talking with them and I'm like, you got to give me a minute. I'm like, there, there's a lot of noise going on here. Somebody else just showed up that has nothing to do with this house, mm. but they're here. Yeah. And uh-huh. I was trying to figure it out. And when we went back downstairs into the kitchen area, I kind of focused in on that one spirit and here that spirit is attached to his mother. And I, I were sitting there talking about it. And I said, you know what? I said, that other spirit is attached to your mother. And he, they, everybody was just like, what? And I said, and his mom came in from the dining room and she's like, you're telling me there's, there's a ghost here now. And I said, yeah, they're attached to you. If somebody had a camera and took a picture you would see the orb or something attached to you. This is amazing, right? And I got as we're sitting the there, as we're sitting there talking about it, his friend Rob, yeah, right, yeah, he's a doctor, and he whips out his cell phone. He quick snaps a picture. Boom! He blows up the picture, and he goes, "Holy crap!" And there's an orb <laughs> attached to his mother's arm. And she's looking and she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm like, there's yeah. that other spirit that came into the house that wasn't there before. Okay. So, that place was off the charts. That yeah, place was that off was the wild. charts. But you in the backyard, Dominic yep. didn't even want to go. He couldn't pass this one line because there was like it was like an Indian yeah. burial ground or something back there. So they this they didn't and, want me back there. Right. They didn't. want. Yeah. Well, do you remember Tom came in? Tom Carey came in. He yeah. comes into the, we were doing a screening of the video that we did, the Beast of Bryn Athen. And it, we had a lot of people that came on uh, talking about their eyewitness reports. Tom comes in with his wife into the backyard, takes a tumble right there in the backyard. Like some, like like something either pushed him down or he fell in a, yep. I know there was a little divot there too, but it that, that place was really kind of like very, very creepy. So we're doing another follow-up on that video as well. Oh, cool. But, um, yeah. But, uh, but there was yeah. one other thing I wanted to tell you guys, Doug and Alex. I know I sent you a clip. Doug, you're going to freak out when you see this. Okay. The last video that we did, <clears throat> and if you need to wrap it up, let me know. But the last video that we did uh, right before uh, the Halloween season when we did all of our events in October, we did a haunting at the Hanoverville Roadhouse in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, the owner, Mark Dennis, great guy. Phenomenal awesome. food there. Great place. This place yep. used to be a biker bar. It used to have female mud wrestling there. And oh, yeah. Tiny Tim oh, used yeah. to perform there. <laughs> so, so, Sounds like a <clears throat> fun, kind so of fun place. So, Eric, are you uh, are you talking about the clip with the chair? Yeah. Yep. Now, he, he check this out. He sends me, right okay. prior to the investigation, he sends me two security camera videos that he got. He was in the building and uh, he was doing paperwork. It's 11 o'clock at night. He hears this huge bang and he goes downstairs and checks it out. Nothing's going on. He thought maybe somebody was trying to get in. Um, But then he goes back and looks at the security footage and runs it back about an hour. And this is the first video that he sees. Check this out. Now That's I'm gonna one. I'm gonna make sure I preface this. He is filming this from his phone from his computer. That's right. why it's shaky. And that's like he's like a screenshot that way. Then five minutes later, after this video, after you see the chair go again, okay, there's a little burst of energy you see there too. Um, and I said to Mark, I said, could that have been the bang that you were you you heard? Maybe that was something there. So f- this next video, five minutes later, after the chair is already out, I think, did I send you that one, Alex? I think yeah, I yeah, yeah. Um, he shows same us, area. Same area. He shows us this, and there's an orb that you could clearly see going from left to right. See it? And watch this. Yeah. 
sugar packet container gets thrown to the ground. <clears throat> now, we went over there. We we were there. We were there at the and I debunked this because both Dominic and I were like, wait a minute, could this be a hoax? Could somebody be hoaxing this? And we both decided there's absolutely no way that you could even be there doing anything with the chair or that packet because the security camera footage would see somebody back there um, or the camera would see somebody back there because there's that wall that's down there. Um, it's built out. And plus the tables there as well. There was a table there and it's so far out there. There's, if you could kind of see that on the, on the right hand side, like no one could be there and pushing in, pushing the chair. Plus the chair was he they're heavy, heavy yeah. chairs. Um, so I, there's we have it, yeah, we have it in the video where I take the chair and I push it on the floor, and it's the same chair that's there. And when I go to push it, I had to push it really hard, and it didn't move that far. It wasn't a slideable floor. It was pretty, no. pretty much yeah. like okay. you know. So we go to the attic, guys, right? <clears throat> and uh, Mark had said there was a paranormal team that was in there that had turned there was a mirror up there they had turned this mirror around and when they turned the mirror around all of a sudden all this poltergeist activity started happening that all hell started breaking loose so they decided to turn the mirror around so so mark told us he's like whatever you do don't turn the mirror around <laughs> don't so, touch the mirror <laughs> don't touch the mirror so we didn't you know and I, my one buddy nick says you should have touched the mirror you should have done that but um <laughs> But we didn't do that. But what we did do is we put a static camera in the, uh, and I didn't send you that clip, Alex. This is where people have to go look at our video to check it out. Um, it's basically we caught something in the mirror uh, because we were also catching right down. We were doing a lot yeah. of magnetometer readings right by that. There was a chair in front of the mirror. And we had originally thought that was the chair that was in the dining room. Um, but it wasn't that chair that that moved is actually still there. And as yep. a matter of fact, I think Dominic, you sat in that chair. I when we sat had, in it. Yeah. When we had dinner one night. We got went up and got some B roll and uh, and we got some dinner while we were there. But uh, it was unbelievable, man. I mean, so see, Eric, I think I don't think there's any creepier. In, <laughs> I'm talking about seeing something in a mirror. So based on that, we're gonna just we're gonna we're just gonna completely eliminate you. <laughs> <laughs> just get him out of here, Alex. We <laughs> have an injection chair. Um, but they, but why is it that you keep talking about the creepiest things? I mean, the mirrors, the woman walking out of the woods and saying something to you. Well, because and, it happened. That's that's. I know. I didn't say it didn't happen. No, 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 no I knew that. But I'm, it's, <laughs> it's, it's these things just. Happen but why are you? Why are you just? Why are you jarring my core? Well, if that if that was our if look, this is what we're doing. We are all about truth, right, Dom? Yep. When we do in our investigation, we are uh, look. I am look looking at these things. I look at that skeptically. When we do the ghost situation, oh, I'm yeah. like, what's I really know. going on here? You know, what's what is really yep. going on? If I thought you were, if I thought you were fibbing, I oh, wouldn't, no, no, no. Be, I wouldn't <laughs> be freaked out. Yeah, I know, I know. It's you terrible. can tell when someone's telling you a real story. Well, Eric because sat there, and with that chair, he was looking. Well, where can you attach a string? Right. Can you stand over here yeah. and try to pull that chair? And there was the angle that it comes out straight out and then turns. There is no way that if you had a string on it, it would have just turned right away. Yeah. And I mean, he was sitting there and we're eating at the table and he's like, there's no way. There's no way. I mean, he's like, I couldn't even well, sit here. You know, I've experienced enough poltergeist activity, not very often, but a few times where when it happens, you know, it's real. Oh, yeah. Because if you're alone yeah. or you're with your daughter or whatever and it happens and you both see it, no one's faking yeah. anybody. You no. just. But I mean, you, I've seen my daughter burst into tears because wow. we get so freaked out. Yep. Do you, Doug, do you think that is also an Alex too? Do you think that could be the energy of that person you're with? I think well, <clears throat> my theory on things that have happened here have been, it's like a pattern from somebody else that did something. Mm. Like, like uh, one time we heard a vet come home banging pans, opening drawers, getting, you know, putting stuff on the stove. We just figured she was home. And of course I called out, Yvette, hey, you're home, whatever. And 
There was no answer. Mm. And it got quiet. And then we, we, we went kind of like, we looked at each other and I called out again. And that's when it was silent. And my daughter, Asia, just started crying. And mm. we went upstairs and there was nothing. But we both clearly heard the whole cooking thing going on. Yeah. That's... You know, we heard the silverware drawer opening and the silverware and all that stuff. We didn't see anything, but that's still, I would still think that's poltergeist activity. Definitely. Because, you... you know, something caused those things. Yeah. And I've had knocking, we've had knocking on the door, like banging, boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, boom, you know, in the middle of the night. And it's like really freaky. No yeah. reason, don't see anything. Um, so, you know, I, I believe in this stuff. Yeah. It's, you don't need to hoax it is what I'm saying. Well, yeah, exactly. exactly. You don't need to. It, it just happens. One, the, one of the reasons why we loved your show was because you were really truth-based. You know, you're really yeah. digging deep into yeah. what people were experiencing. Yeah. You know, and then, of course, you've got the shows now that are kind of like they're reenacting a lot of stuff, but the reenactments didn't really happen that way. Yeah. But I think what, you know, what we're doing here, and that's why it's so important we we to have Dominic on the team. And we also had another uh, spirit medium, mm -hmm. Karen Luchin, who was amazing as well. And we're going to this year, we're working with some more spirit mediums along with Dominic, where we're going to have we want to have some other, you know, energies and what other people yeah. are feeling. Um, and it's so important. I mean, it's amazing what's going on out there. Be interesting if you guys could do more Bigfoot related stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. And we just see what coming. happens. We're doing a follow up uh, to the beat to the Pine Barrens Bigfoot uh, this summer, and yeah. actually, a friend of mine in uh, Sandpoint, Idaho, which has also been having a lot of Bigfoot activity, wants us to come out there and do a Bigfoot investigation out there. Yeah, if you ever need a place to let me know. I've oh man, that'd be great. Uh, New hot spots. Alex, cool. I, I, I'm not trying to rush anybody or anything, but is there a certain cutoff that we have? <laughs> We're at 921. <laughs> yeah, we should probably have you guys on again. Yeah. yeah so definitely. let's, if let's wrap have it up. Us. Give, give us the name of your, your channel, guys. So it's uh, Eric Mintel Investigates. It's on YouTube. And, yeah. uh, we're, and if anyone has a smart TV, which I'm sure everybody has a smart TV now, um, you can go on, there's our channel on YouTube, um, on your smart television, uh, you can add central New Jersey network to your device and you can watch us, uh, our videos every Saturday night at 11 o'clock Eastern mm -hmm. standard time. And, um, and then up out here in Pennsylvania, we're on, uh, in Lehigh Valley area, Pennsylvania, we're in about 90,000 homes on cable on uh, service electric, oh, that's cool. uh, which is cool. So we're trying to work on getting a TV show. We've got a lot of great stories. We've got a lot of, a, a lot of irons in the fire and a lot of stories to tell. Um, so we, we're going to really go, you know, headstrong this year into a lot of these follow-ups with dogman sightings, UFOs, um, ghosts, Bigfoot. Uh, we got, we got our work cut out for us. So we're going to be very, very busy. Very cool. And, and where can people listen to your music? They can find me at ericmintelquartet.com, mm -hmm. and I play piano. And um, my hero and mentor was a gentleman by the name of Dave Brubeck. If uh, anyone's familiar with him, I knew uh, him uh, and was good friends. He also wrote liner notes for our CDs and really great mentor to have. Um, and also people can find us on Facebook, too, at Eric Mintel Investigates. Okay. And they can find Dominic on, uh, on uh, Facebook as well. And Dominic uh, will play some tambourine for them as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way I get into the band. <laughs> <laughs> that that and maracas. <laughs> and obviously, and Doug, you and Doug and Alex, you could tell that we have a good time with this whole thing too. It's like, yeah, we, uh, you know, what when we're on the investigation, we are serious investigators because it's like, um, right? But you got to keep your sense of humor. Ha absolutely, yeah. or else we would be freaked out. Oh yeah, and, you, and not only the sense of humor is good, even bringing the field. Um, I think you have better, more action, as they would say. Yeah, more activity. Definitely, definitely. And uh, so yeah. next time we'll, we'll have just Dominic on, and we're going to not let you on. <laughs> on <purpose. laughs> so, scared, Alex, can you make sure that, can you make sure Eric's blacklisted? Yeah, I'm doing that right now. All of the untold radio network shows. It's like, 
<laughs> it's like he's done. And the other the other comment I wanted to get make him off, get him John off, Ayers yeah. won that book. John Ayers won that book fair and square. But why is it every time I give away something heavy, it's always in Europe? <laughs> We always have to fly it and pay probably oh, yeah. twice as much to get it here. Shipping. It gets me every time, Eric. I had his, I gave away this big, huge Bigfoot statue here, I don't know, if, a couple of months ago. Thing weighs, you know, 30 pounds and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. It was a big, giant care package. First guy, he wins it. He's in England. I'm like, no, you did not win it. Next. I'm not paying $300, $400 for free. So I you know, just I'll leave it on that sense of humor. But Merry Christmas. Hey, happy holidays Christmas. to you guys. Merry Christmas to you guys. Too. I was just joking about the blacklisting. Not really. Listen, Doug, I'm a jazz musician. If I'm not getting busted on by the guys, there's something wrong, you know? So, anyhow, I've got to get um, going. i got to go take the garbage out. i got to get my gun loaded. I'll be... Taking a little extra time. And if I see a woman... That comes walking out of the woods while I'm taking the garbage out. You better I'm going to call you tonight. <laughs> call me. Call I'll me. Call there you go. Call Dominic. I'll call Dominic. Call me. Yeah. Talk to her. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Actually, I just deleted your number off my phone. So we're good. So thanks, Alex. I'm going to well, see you, you on Christmas Eve, Alex. Yes. And we're going to get together, everybody. And um, so everybody have a great Christmas, great New Year's. Um, and then we're going to be on. On the twenty eighth, correct, Alex? Yep. Yes, We're still doing we will a be on the twenty eighth. Yeah, next show. And who do we have on? Do you even know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do not know. It's, uh, I believe it's Angelique and. Uh, oh Dominic, right, Dominic Angelique knows, and Dominic Cindy knows. Goodbreak. <laughs> yeah. So they're gonna, we're going to talk Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Okay, see you guys. Thank All you right, much. Guys, thanks. thanks, thanks, Dominic. Thanks, thanks, Eric. Yep. I call you up in the middle of the night. Been bothered by dreams, ain't feeling alright. You give me comfort, say just give it some time. By the end of our talk, I'm feeling just fine. You and I will always know. Ain't no ordinary love we got going on I pick you up in my 59 Ford We head on down the road until we get bored Just you and me and the sun and the wind If the rain should stop falling we'll head on home again Everybody else can see Every day, but I 